when we left off, it was just after the fight against the trolls. Fallon did some more talking with the eagles. They were forced down from their usefulness by something just gargantuan. It was way bigger and fast enough that I could just usually go above the clouds, dive down, swallow one of them whole, and then go back out, go back up. So, they weren't really able to see or fight her, they just had to leave or else the flock would get wiped out. We were able to get a short rest in, and then we climbed to the top of the summit. Rather grisly scene. Including a dead knight and his some still alive griffin. And that's about the time after some time to prep, plan, and possibly panic for some of us. Mostly like not turn up there. We had the encounter start when the creature was, well, we saw the shadow, and it was getting bigger like it was approaching us. It turned out to be a sky swimmer. Those things are huge. It was a long, hard fight, and I believe we almost lost Nautilus because uh, Leviathan swallowed him and then tried to fly off. Valen was very, very brave by teleporting into its stomach and then teleporting back out with Nautilus. Then we were finally able to down it after that. The uh, giant eagles were thankful. We found to leave two, that was the griffin and two of the missing hippogriffs. I believe there was also one, at least one dead hippogriff in the corpse pile. Found a few magic items on the knight that was in there. Turns out it'd be really help with now being a flat being a ride on a flying mount. So I wish to be able to do that someday, unfortunately. But we were up there. We were able to get a long rest. Then the griffin sort of commandeered the surviving hippogriffs to carry us to this temple that was in a hidden location. It was more pleasant for some of us than others. But it's a hidden temple to believe it was the Yellow God. Mm -hmm. And we're thinking that's for Madrigal, Madeline's sister, ended up going inside. That turned out to be a thief of a Dino Sphinx with a name I'm not even going to try to pronounce. So easy, Iliocastic. Reed told us there'd be a few trials, and he let us choose where we get banished to if we end up failing. Initial plan was plane of fire, since that would be getting half home, but 
I've run aside from half and knowledge, but I don't have time on no sense of me. Likewise, plain of water would be heaven dead, but Talius and Nautilus. Yeah, Madeline. But... Madeline? Oh yeah, Necklace of Adaptation. But Hoth would totally die instantly, and then his ghost would chase you everywhere. Anyways... We finally end up settling on the Hidden Realm, which is the homeworld of the giants, where we believed we could at least survive long enough to find a way to get out, instead of most of us dead instantly. Also, Hoth is pretty sad we're gonna have to kill Tarnak at some point, but he's keeping that to himself. Okay, and uh, with all of that, Inger Castle turned towards you and presented you the option uh, as a uh, said, pick your punishment if you fail the test. For you never to be able to try uh, once again to delve into this vault. You pick the hidden realm, the, uh, the giant uh, plane of Jotunheim as your place of exile if you were to fail this test, however you believe that you can actually uh, succeed in this challenge. As the Locasti stands in, uh, uh, before you, um, presenting you three different challenges. There's strength, of heart, and of mind. As she stands up in front of you with her pair of golden wings, all this uh, um, brass and gold uh, regalia, uh, she st uh, stands in front of you and looks at everyone. So, you appear to be ready. Well then, uh, let us start. You can uh, converse with yourselves, but I will require, but I will take only one answer to each of my questions. Let's see if you know this world as the world uh, ahead of you, the secrets of which uh, lie down in that vault. I present you the, friend, the first riddle. From the remains of the Dragon Queen's old foe we rose. No matter what you try, strike us down. We will come back with twice the fury. Yet the Dragon Queen's greedy head contains her bane. What are we? I also put it on the top, so you guys don't miss anything. All right. Um, bit of a group huddle, I suppose, then. Uh, I, I was about to say something, but I don't know if the novels particularly know. Uh, I mean, from what I can tell, it's about Tiamat, but... So, what would we call the Dragon Queen's old foe, then? Let's figure that out first. Is it referring to... Let's say it is Tiamat. Is it Bahamut, then? Mm. It could be. But... but what would have came from his remains? It sounds it's, like... But it seems like Bahamut would be... Her, her always foe when when it talks about something about twice the fury it makes me think of like a, a troll or if there was some creature that would double itself if you didn't kill it the right way it's 
specifies that the queen's greedy head contains our fame. No. Doesn't she have five heads? So I'm not sure which one's the most greedy. I... Hmm, it seems like... It seems like historically... The, we would be talking about dragon's heads, and I know that the red ones always were rumored to collect treasure, but for greed, was it the the green one, the white one? Well, let's think. Is, I suppose well, the white one would be ice, the red one fire. Green acid. What about the uh, dragon's the dragon's uh, weakness? My father always said, uh, "Pride comes before the fall of all dragons." Well, it speaks of the weakness of the old dragon queen's foe. So, it's not a dragon's weakness or it may not even be a dragon then if it's an old foe. So I'm trying to think what could be weak to fire then. Is there uh, any way I could try and make a religion check? Uh, for which part? Exactly. Uh, for the particularly the old foe. Uh, uh, like that, the... Would, that would probably fall to uh, history I would assume. I mean, I'm not good at really either, but I'm going to try and make a check. Um, I'll just try to think. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, I, I am slightly better than you on that, as I have a modifier. That's uh, how good I'll be, but I can at least try. Sure, I'll allow a similar map. Twice as bad, <laughs> twice as twice the be this better, but not totally uh, enough. Aside of the platinum dragon, you do not remember uh, another uh, figure, another creature that has been uh, related much with a dragon kid. Yet you feel that this does not fit. Would it, would it be something that is against, would it, instead of greed, would it be charity? If we're, if we could be talking about celestial beings, then it's not, it might not only be thinking Baphomet, it could be being from the Celestial side. Baphomet, not uh, Baphomet, sorry. <laughs> Baphomet is very much uh, different from all that. Not has much to do with uh, Tiamat or the Dragon Queen. Yeah, Baphomet is the demon prince of beasts, I do believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Twice the fury. Could. Is it... Strike us down, but come back with twice the fury. I mean. I feel like that's important there. Is it Did I talk... roll insight to determine if greedy head is just a specific head or they just mean Tiamat in general? <laughs> that, that would be a nature check. Your uh, whole hypothesis is earlier on from the five heads, which one is the most greedy is correct, but I cannot tell you which one is the most greedy one God. without a successful answer. Where, where is this? Where is this? And uh, Joker walks over to Madeline and there's no yeses. Where is the the, uh, the 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 one I like to eat? You know, the your friend. 
doesn't he know much about uh he might know more about the abyssal side she is more well i'm sure he might hear something he might not okay. if uh, demons live long do they not I said you at least oh, okay. well, I didn't see it. <laughs> no worries. Okay, but well, I'm okay. thinking about what it again. Would I, what would I probably have to roll to think of monst monsters or beings that would come back come back that be able to come back if you if you downed them? And now that I think about it, if we were to pick a specific head, I'm pretty sure it's the red one. So I'm guessing something weak to fire, then. Hmm. Uh, Would it then... DM, did you hear me? Uh, come again about the fire, about... Uh... <laughs> Say it again. Sorry, I heard Ma Madeline and I'm now focused on that. So repeat what you said. I heard. Okay, what would I have to roll to determine what sort of creature that could come back if you, if you quote unquote uh, killed it? That would be a nature check. However, just to make uh, sure with uh, everyone, this, this is like the very first one is the other one to see and pretty much see how you all uh, uh, react on uh, those uh, things. Uh, I will allow everyone to roll once per level. Every character is allowed to make one roll in uh, uh, note uh, multiple. I... I've, I've heard of a creature like a dragon that if you if you cut his head doesn't it come back what it would if for the dragon would not be the enemy of tiamat if she is the queen the queen of evil dragons mm. will still the good dragons what about this could be simple right it, the the enemy we just fought the ones you incinerated earlier what if it's those a troll well I was also thinking, maybe not at a direct weakness, though I don't know how they're the old enemies, but... Well, strike us down, come back with twice the fury. It comes back. A revenant? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The are just undead in particular. I don't... I don't believe the Dragon Queen has any particular animosity to Undead. True. What is. If they were derived uh, from the remains of their old foe, they would, hold, they would hold a vengeance. And they're weak to fire, that's my guess. Or maybe not weak, but it affects them. I might guess. The trolls are the ones we fought earlier. And they are might our troll, are, are trolls the old foe of Tiamat? Well, giants, mm. maybe. But... Giants and the Hamut would be potential old foes. Is it. I wonder if it's an actual creature, if not uh, a feeling or. Uh, uh, something else like confidence or pride lust or greed I, I, w I wonder if if we might be overthinking this a little bit I don't know but if the whole uh, comeback's twice as strong what were the words it says twice the fury, twice not the, the strength, fury. twice, twice the, fury. the anger. Yeah. 
Could it could it be vengeance? Hmm. Out of character, I'm pretty sorry now what it is, but I'm trying to think of a way to get to that knowledge and character. Oh, totally. If only we had a little mechanical owl to give us a hint or something. I don't know what that mechanical owl is. There is, a, there, is a, there is something that's not a mechanical owl, but it has a stinger on its ass. No. If only Captain America were here to give us a hint. Oh. I mean, that's an obvious answer, but I'm not sure if we've ever encountered or if that's something that exists and... Okay, it's a bit late, but can I use my inspiration to re-roll that nature check? Uh, okay, the history of the nature. Um, the nature is for which one, specifically? Nature is foes that would be able to come back if you... Okay, okay sure. Use your inspiration, I'm okay. Uh... That would probably mean a creature that has uh, some sort of regeneration. Uh -huh. I don't think it's Revenant. But would that... Uh... Would a Hydra have a reason to be enemies with Tiamat? Uh, I wasn't there. Uh, twice as strong. If you cut off a Hydra's head, it'll. Wasn't there a, a legend a long time ago about Tiamat? There was another dragon god. Dragon god that, Slonia. Yes, and, and, and Tiamat fought Lernia and spilled her blood and each blood created a, a monster that was a uh, hydro hydra yes if you cut off a head two more will grow back unless it's taken unless you're able to burn it strike come back with twice a fury twice as many heads I think that might be our best answer. And if not, I suppose we'll be able to gas ask the trolls ourselves. <laughs> I, uh, I, yeah, I guess I would bet Hydra. Uh, so is the, this uh, the answer? So, yes, I am. Hydra, I think, is our answer, yeah. Hydra. Hi. So who's our official answer? Madeline, you were having a good chat when we met that the, the lovely... The lovely uh, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to talk to her. Is it, uh, is it Hydra or is it the creature's name? I don't know if this creature is very big on specifics, but I once they told me, like you told well, me, that's... I said two barrels, but I didn't say how big the barrels. Well, it says what, see, part of the riddle is what are we, not what am I. That would imply more than one creature, not a specific creature. 
Yeah, it says they rose from the old foe, so they would be a oh. race of monsters. Okay, okay, it makes it yes, yes. It, it sounds is, yes. like our answer. Hydra is indeed a creature that spawned from the vile blood of Lerna and from the atrocities of uh, the Dragon Queen. Let's see. How about... And uh, Iliogas stands for a moment thinking. How about this one? This primer world filled with crude, disgusting, inferior creatures. Always lurking to admire me. Always there to scheme against me. It is hard to be me in this pitiful world of yours. And so I dream of a better place and where I see beauty. And so I dream when I do, fragments of myself uh, rise to serve me. And so I dream. If I dream of blood, blood takes form. And so I dream. And if I dream of death, death becomes me. What am I? Okay, that one I can almost sensibly tell out of character. So can I? Or a game character if you guys want to, but yeah, sure. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, it talks a lot about dreaming and becoming dreams. So, I suppose I could work that into an end character and knowledge or inquiry by possibly rolling to see. What sort of creatures could reproduce through dreams? What kind of <laughs> role would that be? Uh, da, 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 da. I guess from my nature check. And I know uh, it sounds weird. But uh, I get I get a I get a laugh. Is this is this after this one oh, where it's like Oh Dirty Trunny Hydra? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, so, I'll give you answers on a PM. Okay, it'd have to be some sort of other worldly creature because nothing native to this plane and certainly not certainly not the plane of fire either. It speaks of um the primal world is full with crude, disgusting creatures and they scheme against it. It seems to be a creature that's very... Paranoid? Mm. Or perhaps vain. Yes. Or maybe even both. Yeah, it's quite the outlook, but you know, that's how it is in the eye of the beholder. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Ugh. Don't you get inspiration for that pun? <laughs> you get psychic damage for that pun. <laughs> Should be <real> yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be real awkward when we get to when we get the answer wrong against <laughs> the Shadow Realm. It's not Shadow Realm. But... Giant Shadow Realm. So yeah, I think we're agreed on beholders. Oh, I didn't know that was an answer. But uh, as you turn and say this, uh, name the creature, if your casting will turn towards you, look at him. Huh. So you do know of creatures of this land and of uh, uh, those touched by the Far Realm. But what about these ones? 
One can speak. One can speak and observe. One can speak, observe and fight. One can speak, observe, fight and command. One can speak, observe, fight, command and improvise. What are they? Huh. Hmm. Well, if, uh, I suppose we could go down the list. Well, it would be a chain of command thing, wouldn't it be? Uh, well, from the running that I think it's being a creature of some intelligence. <laughs> Talius can speak. <laughs> Talius can improvise. What do you guys mean? <laughs> There's the only one that can. <laughs> hmm. One can speak. One can speak and observe. One can speak, observe, and fight. One can speak, observe, fight. Yeah. One can speak, observe, fight, command, and improvise. Can I roll a nature check to see if I would know any kind of creatures that kind of have like a chain of command system? Uh, to, 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 to roll me an roll me an arcana because it cannot fall into the nature category. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. What to say? Could I have given her advantage on that since I have proficiency? You can roll on that as well if uh, you wish. As I said, everybody has pretty much a roll per per evil if they want to use it. Okay. Jump up. Wee wee wee. Done. <laughs> wee. You win. I'm gonna use my own on that. <laughs> we roll that one. Hey. Okay. I'll send uh, the clue on Discord Talus. This is just when Talius decides to tune in. <laughs> <laughs> Talius' brain has been fucking TV static until now. <laughs> just dead rising elevator music. <laughs> I imagine, like, the national weather alert uh, beep. <laughs> okay. Just a I presume I'm, with... I'm allowed to like relay this to the party, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, of course. Okay, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> now I won't. <laughs> I don't think um, I will. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it because I don't even know how how else we get this. It seems extremely lawful in nature, following commands to the letter, with mechanical precision. Extremely lawful in nature. Oh. Constructs? Maybe. Mm, some sort of construct, perhaps. Mechanical in nature. Lawful. So, golems can't speak. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. I was literally just looking at that. Oh, in the shit. monster That's manual. A shit. Where the hell did I put that? Monodrome, do I drink? Yeah. 
kind of will look towards you and say, eh, I don't know what kind of creature that uh, is, but they do sound like a bunch of idiots. Well, do you have any kind of suggestions at all other than that they're idiots? Uh, ten of just turns into a frog. Ribbit? Gotcha. <laughs> Very helpful. It's also what are they, not what is it, or what is... Hmm. It said lawful, um, the angels? No. There's not a lot to work with at this fucking <laughs> monodrone, monodrone is probably the answer. Hmm. Because out of game, they all, there's a monodrone. Can, am I, can I say this? Am I able to say this? DM? Uh, out of character, I do not mind speculating. I, if you can somehow introduce it in character, it might be worth an inspiration, but uh, if you find it hard to do, I also do not mind. Fine. I don't know. I don't think Novelist would have any particular reason, but um, a monodrone can perform one simple task at a time and relay a single message. A duo drone can supervise units of monodrones. A tri drone leads them, leads lesser monodrones into battle. One pr provides as a field officer, and one can improvise. So I think it's, be I think it's modrones. Well, yeah. Would it, or would it be just drones? Well. That's what they're t they're called as modrones. Yeah, modrones, modrones. That does yeah. fit it because there's there's five. several types and they're all specific. Yeah. It, the five hint five was five. they're extremely lawful though. Yeah, well, um, all of them are lawful. That's all. They're all they're lawful. They're all lawful okay. aligned beings. They, they, yeah, they, they are. They are beings of absolute law. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, aside from out of game speculation, I'm not sure. Hmm. Let's go with it. Our answer is the funny gear people. <laughs> <laughs> funny, funny gear people with stupid faces. <laughs> what round did I live in usually? Oh, that was good. <laughs> In older editions, it was Mechanus. Now, in this world, is shit in the place of other law. So, as you say the word modern studio castings, he will turn and say, Impressive. I might have underestimated you. It's almost like one of us read the book. <laughs> God. Uh... Let's see now how you fare against. This one. A snake's head, bathed in flames and uh, lightning, soiled uh, by the mud of the old. But the snake has no tail. Its blood traveled the Black River, infesting everything in their path with their felt. If a door was to be opened, it shall never close. Of what do I speak? Okay, Black River, that sounds that sounds particularly interesting and important. Yeah, Guys, yeah. we don't want to race for all our roles again, so each of us just focus on one clue at a time. I will be I'll try to roll for the 
connection to Black Rivers. Sure. Make me an arcana check, Harv. However, I I cannot give you an answer to that. However, I I might be able to give some. Not just entirely. Can can I? This might seem odd. Can I make like a straight wisdom check? just on the idea of trying to think of like a a, a term or some like it, this does the, this doesn't seem like a creature particularly it seems like a feeling or a, or some type of um okay 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 yeah. um i can allow for an insight on that okay well then insight would be higher than my regular wisdom so uh, I will use that. Oh, uh, can I? Um, I have inspiration, and I am going to use it. Uh, please. Thank you. Very well. Very well. <laughs> the answer is Madeline. The friends we made along the way. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this answer. Ah. Uh. Oh, uh, I, hmm, I think it's more of a place or a where than who, than a who or a what. It will never close. He's gonna look to Turnock. Turnock, is is this where you're from? <laughs> All right, bitch. Well, I can tell you right now, it won't be anything from here on the material plane. Tarnock, if you can say yes, we're not trying to send you back. Uh, Tarnock pauses for a moment and it turns into a centipede. I'm just a little wizard centipede. I do not know much. Would this As he be tries to river? As uh, to, 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 to make me a persuasion, mother. Then. Oh, okay. Wait. He's extremely bad at those, but I. I think I know where, and I think I know why this Turnock is pacing so much. I think this does. might ref I think this Hmm? That's what he told me. Sorry? The river Styx. Oh. That's the name of the river. Damn it, I was gonna say that out of character. That was the first <laughs> thing that came to mind. <laughs> uh, what, did, what did what did she say? She is very cry uh, very uh, cry. Styx. Sorry, but the river sticks. Damn it. But First that's the name of the it. river, not a specific place. Mm. But I there was, is the sticks. I was thinking... We, when we went to Iron uh, Haven... Or not, not Iron Haven, the... Angel Golden Stand. Angel Stand. They said that the, the Red Knights were guarding an, a gate to the Abyss. That was open. I have a sneaking suspicion that Turnock came through that gate. Hmm. And that is the door that will never close. So our answer is... Angel stand? Or... Uh, <laughs> oh, careful. <laughs> uh... Because it doesn't I... speak of angel stand. It says if a door was to be opened, not a door. To yes, angel but... stand. No, but if if that is where the door was opened, if he rode the river sticks and then came out in in angel stand, 
I think the abyss is too broad. The abyss but is where the the abyss might be where the door is from, but I think this refers to where the door opened. It says if a door was to be opened, not if that a door is opened. If the door was opened anywhere else, it would stay open. Yes, but... So it doesn't have to specifically be Angelstead. Uh, I, I haven't made a roll yet, DM. Can I make a roll? <laughs> and on top of... I don't know what moment uh, 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 Valen wanted to make a roll, and I uh, responded to that uh, right after. So, Valen, what roll? <laughs> Jork also wanted to make a roll, apparently, but... Ah! That sounds like a minute to laugh at Sarah. No, let's don't do that. That's good. I'll laugh. <laughs> okay, okay. Low intelligence. I rolled. I rolled a one before. Uh, I'm just trying to think what I if uh, wisdom or intelligence or arcana. Just... Or what exactly? Which part of the whole riddle? The part about the door. Okay, uh, make me Oh well. Uh, you do not have any prior knowledge uh, to all this, yet, from what you have heard, at least, uh, a portal to the abyss indeed never closes. You've heard that in the past, you can remember that, but not something else uh, that you can remember from your time before uh, venturing or Reading. And if, if I can speak up now, I can say that Turnock probably probably didn't ride the river Styx because that would erase all of his memories. Uh, I did not. I just know it. We put other. Demons, evil demons, he will say, but everybody with a passive inside you probably guess that all the souls that have somehow ended up in the abyss were put into the uh, river sticks just for fun. Yeah, we did it only with bad people and other demons. But it also, wait, it speaks of the brood. So maybe it's referring to demons specifically. But it, it doesn't, it was, what I got, it was referring to a place. It's not definitely not being. Angel Sand. It, it has to be. That's the only place we know of that has opened the door to the abyss. So you're, just saying, say... you're saying that there's no other place in the realm that is open to the abyss? No, but that's the only one we know of, and if we didn't know of others... That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean it's the answer. This isn't a question specifically for us. We don't know of any hydras, but they asked about it anyways. Well, if well, we answer the uh, abyss... Turn up with Simon and say, I mean, he said about dream hydras. He knows about hydras. We've never personally met a Hydra, as far as I know. There's other gates to the Abyss, and it speaks if a door was to be opened. So that means to where the door would be opened. Not a door to Angel Stand. It would be a door to the Abyss. Angel Stand is infected, yes. But if you were to open a door to Angel Stand without the Abyss being in there, it would close. There'd be no risk of infection. It's only a risk of infection because it's connected to the Abyss. Like, if you take the Abyss out of this equation, Angel Stand doesn't stand on its own. But the Abyss does in both situations. Then what do you propose the answer would be? The Abyss? I don't- I don't want to answer with, a, a, like, the, the river something that it mentions i don't it's it's definitely not the river but the river is in the abyss 
but it speaks of a snake with no tail and its brood. Of and it says, "Of what do I speak?" The snake. So maybe it's the abyss, or maybe it's demons. Could I roll insight on this riddle to see if it's asking about a place or a uh, thing? Out of character, Nautilus has already rolled on that and uh, has told you it's a place. Okay, my but... bad. Sorry. I, I got it. No worries, no worries. I'm very sure it's the abyss. Well... One of us, uh, I think someone else has to do the answer for this one. Do we want us, who wants to say it to uh, Leo Casti? Say the abyss. All right. And I'll look to the Sphinx and say the abyss. Correct. Oh, <laughs> stressful. Oh, thank God, I was drawing blanks everywhere. <laughs> Nautilus really wanted to see the storm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's. Oh, I got. Oh, I, I, I got. My ass for nothing. It's it's the way that you got an inspiration I... right the moment before he said engine stand and he read the inspiration probably right after so he was like okay well when i try i should go for it i'm pretty sure that was the yeah, I, I, got, I got the i got the message and i thought it was to do with the thing i was thinking of but uh just i i i understand where you're coming from but most of these questions don't relate to us whatsoever so i was just like well there's got to be more than one portal to the abyss so All right, let's oh. riddle number four. We only got 200 to go. <laughs> okay, and let's do a hard one. Oh boy, uh, this is a hard one. It's a small one. Uh, in the, maybe you'll know that. I think it's a bit rough, but let's see. <clears throat> if the DM thinks it's rough, that's terrifying. Yeah. You have heard of a creature from the elemental chaos, but. Uh, there are places beyond that as well. It drifts in a sea of stars, a place of beauty, uh, where the judge meets the hero. The sea scorches the agents of evil and those that defy death. The tallest peak stands before you, but it won't, buy, it won't be nightfall until you climb it up. Of what am I speaking? Oh, if it's just in a sea of stars, that does make me think astral pain. Yeah, me too. It says it drifts. Is it a thing that drifts? Yeah, out, astral of character, drift this, uh, out of character, this is most possibly the most, uh, some kind of celestial thing. If it burns undead and kills everything, uh, probably a realm of some kind. And won't be nightfall until you climb it all. Somewhat implies a mountain, and only at the top of that mountain does it get dark. It is. It sounds almost like the pink one always talks about his friends and being good. I remember my granddaddy talking about some kind of mountain. If, or it's people with wings and such. Fanciful tales. Nice, I can check, lol. <laughs> I did get insult to the injury. <laughs> Does anybody know such place? Oh, if we suggest stories, my old dad used to tell me. Well, what? I mean, would it? 
would it have been a story I heard of on the sea? I mean, I know it's not talking about the sea, but would it be a sailor's story tale? Or... Uh, about which part? Uh, well, it's specific. just like the, it drifts in a sea of stars, so I wonder if there's anything that's sort of been... Or oh, you mean like a star sign of some kind? Okay, make me a um, navigator tools check with intelligence. Oh shit, I got, I got... Or, or water vehicles, either of that can work. I can work okay, uh, I have navigator tools. Uh, at, at end, so... Yeah, it makes me... So with intelligence, proficiency, uh, normal. Okay, um, I will say that. Let me write it in a PM. It's more discreet way. I navigate sometimes. <laughs> These guys have names. They are pretty, I hear. There, I'll, I'll just I'll stay up. There is the star map, and then there's the astral sea. On the star map, no land is rumored to exist. In the astral sea and plain, there are dominions. Like, uh, with like uh, the ones with wings and dominions, like demons and such, or what do you speak of, not less? I believe areas in, in the astral sea, or... Um, Domains in the Astral Sea. Mm. I know there are domains or gods that made their domains within the Astral Sea. Tallest mountain. Hmm. My fall doesn't have to be little, it could be analogous to something like the end of a journey. Is it not? So there is places like that. What, is there any places that would be like, uh, like fire to kindle if they were undead or evil apart, like cause them increase in hard pain? Just to step on that that area, that uh, what you call it, realm. I, I think it might be referring to. Maybe, I was wrong the last time. I said it would be a feeling, but it says the tallest peak stands before you, but it won't be nightfall until you climb it. All would that be something like? Uh, determination on it's a mountain mm. the end of a journey so be some place in the astral plane that has some sort of association with mountains I could I possibly means... could i possibly roll on that i have somewhat of an idea yeah, maybe not kind of tech uh, out of character, just pointing out, I know what it is, but I'm trying to do in character the stupid circle. <laughs> well, out of out of character, Hydra was really obvious, but if we're talking about mountains and we're talking about radiant places, yeah, that's what I'm going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Valen should know. Valen, this is where Valen talks. About. Yeah, but Valen rolled a nine on Arcana, so Valen doesn't get to know. Um, well, I rolled a twenty one. I'm pretty sure I get to know. Because can we roll on this? This is kind of like risky to use my clue on, but can we roll on specific locations? Because this is just like a gut feeling that I think Madeline would think of. 
because she uh, remembers. I'll, I'll say that's an insight check. Uh, PM me your thought if you wish. Okay, because she remembers this because Madrigal was specifically looking for it. Oh, okay. I can. Jerko, Jerko, where are you, Jerko? Before I eat you again, where's the frog? I can tell. Ah! There's only one plane with the ass or sea that both has a mountain and never has night. That would be Mount Celestia. <laughs> yes, but if... Oh, and if you climb to the top of Celestia, then you would join the plane, so it would be... It would be the end of the day for you. It would be She's nightfall. Sis was looking for it. I know it's that. So, Dernock, no. this is where we will send you if you do not behave. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> he is in the other corner, gone. So, I will now give the answer. Mount Celestia. Okay, as uh, uh, also Madeline feels uh, her gut feeling is correct, also for there, is running. Uh, Helio Gassi would say, fair enough. It seems to me that you know both uh, the creatures of this realm and beyond and the places. Let's see if your memory uh, can help you with gifts made from. Uh, uh, from your from your kin. Oh dear, that's a big one. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. An extension of my hand. It protects me from harm and strikes my foes. It now signs with love. I gift it to my son to become a man himself. It now signs with light and seals him from magic. He carves his path and makes his family. He gifts it to his daughter. When time has come, she can become a singer of that art. Illuminating, protecting her from the mystic arts, now able to summon silver and spirits to assist. She marries a man and has a son. Now the son wields it, signing with light, shielded from magic, assisted by the spirits of our kind. The son becomes the rightful heir. It is now harming enemies of our kind with deadly accuracy. Its final form is revealed. Until another one of our kind chooses to wield. Of what am I speaking? I think it's because it says deadly accuracy. I would think of bow. Um, if it extends on the hands, I think that. Um, Size, uh, yeah, it would be some sort of sword. Uh, well, it says accuracy, though. Uh, I think, yeah. do the, uh, I have, yeah. I have, Granda always said to me that. A weapon sometimes carries the uh, soul of its owners. Yeah, this is why you must be careful of what kind of weapon you carry. It sometimes carries the history, almost like uh, it's uh, the soul of the previous owners is, will is willing with you while fighting. Well, it's also passed down through generational lines well, like son to father father to daughter daughter to the son another thing to keep note of is it speaks of sylvan spirits so it's probably elvish in nature would it okay that would probably be can I could I make a history on that, since I did study under the elves, of or the water elves at least. Sure. Uh, 
this is when I get a lovely natural one. Oh, no, come on. A five it is. Ta -da! <laughs> And it's something, if it's something, sounds like something that evolves as it's passed down through generations. It hurts the properties of its owner. Technique. And becomes a singer of that art. If it becomes a singer of that art, that makes me think of the elven art of blade singing. It, okay, it's definitely not that. <laughs> no, no, but it'd be... That's just what I'm uh, thinking. Uh, I'm not that. Yeah, no. It, it's possibly that. Um, it's definitely it's some something else. Elven artifact that's I... possibly connected to blade singing. I have a book that I got uh, back in Cinderfall from. Uh, what's his name? Um, drawing a blank here. Nilavar. Uh, Nilavar, yeah. I got a book from Nilavar on blade singing. Can I, like, maybe check that and kind of cross-reference cross or something? Okay, make me a history check. Yes, sure. And uh, given that you have this book with you, I'll uh, lower the DC for There we go, okay. Hey. Give me a second, I'll write it in the PM. Moonblade. They're, they're talking about a Moonblade. Takes me back from uh, one of those old books I read. Which one was it? One with the elves in it and the uh, demon elves. Oh, well, a long time ago. The one with the elves in it. A broad, very broad. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, uh, it was one with the uh, elven army that came in and then it's... Uh, uh, and they were fighting um, half elf, um, demon foes, and yeah, I can't remember. It's some kind of war, anyway. Okay. Uh, Harth, you may actually be right about this. I mean, I checked the book, and it seems like it fits quite well. This sounds like something that Talius would want to use, but only at night. So. Ah, the <laughs> Demon Fey Wars. Well, uh, Talius, would you maybe like to say the answer since Hark did the last one? What, what, what did he decide the answer might be? Moonlight. Moonlight? <laughs> then he says Blue Crew. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no! Not that moon, Talius. Pull your pants up. Ah! <laughs> uh, no. So, so we're thinking the Moonblade out of character, so I don't mess this up. Yeah. Also, in character, that makes sense to mess it up. But yeah. Um, okay. Like... I'll uh, I'll walk up and I'll say, uh, I think the answer is a uh, the Moonblade. Ah, I see. Well, let's see now. You are seven here, and you've come that far. Let's see if you would be able to pass, get past the uh, test the mind. Wait, does that mean Turnock has to answer one? I mean, so it is for you. Some of you have already answered down, so pretty much it comes down to you. Uh, but yeah, the works of an artisan tailor, a gift to his, his three sons before they embarked the journey uh, and leave to study the magic arts. The first one studies the ways of the arcane, 
uses the magic to heal the people for no personal gain. The second one studies the ways of the dark heart, but soon there will be no love nor beauty in the heart. The third one tries to carve a path of his own, no good, no real, just wants to be alone. The gifts of the tale are now after their hues, one white, one black, one grey, all with a use. Of what am I speaking of? Dragonlance. <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> um, of course, I... thanks to the alignment. For morality. I, I think I know what this is. I you know all I'm of these. To... I'm and struggling it's... with like every single one. <laughs> and it's connected to magical art, so something for spell casters. Would it's I okay, remember... yeah. You, should, I, um, you will be learning a lot of stuff from this. You're getting a history lesson. Yeah, I'm, saying, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to school. Yeah. Um, would I, uh, um, I'm going to roll like a history for this. Would I remember any of the more renowned wizards we've encountered so far wearing a robe of like white, black, or gray colors? Okay. Uh, make me a. Uh... Out of character it is something I have always rented for one of my sorcerers. Well, I don't remember. It's supposed to be legendary. Come on. I just, it makes me arch my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a magic. Fuck. <laughs> um. Okay. It does when right, I could easily connect this end character. It is. <laughs> no, 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 guys. When right, I can easily connect the out of character knowledge with end character knowledge. What should I roll to know about out clothes of some sort that have i also have color changes based on alignment. I'll say that would be an uh, intelligence check for you, because I do not assume you have uh, tailoring uh, tools proficiency. I do not. Loot. Uh, and you said about gloves that change uh, based on uh, gloves, correct? Is what yes, you said. Some sort right. of gloves, uh, I can chains or are different based on alignment. And it says, they're so. It's associated oh. with magical arts as well. Or whatever the word would be. Oh, that was um, that was on save not check, but it's the same modifier. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, that goes to say easier way to connect AC with out of character with in character. Uh, what is that valid for? The uh, contact? Uh, I don't know. Meta knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I roll for meta knowledge. 
as I said, if you have knowledge out of character, feel free to somehow introduce it. Uh, do not restrict yourselves. Because it, be, it would be a shame for all of you to be like, I know it's out of character, but I cannot say it in character, so we are not moving forward. Uh, but uh, if you would need a clue to reaffirm your suspicions, uh, with that I cannot check. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you're doing. Well. If anyone else has any idea, I think these robes must be of some significance, so perhaps it comes with a title, so what's one of the highest known practicers of an arcane? Well, that, that would be an archmage. Hmm. Uh, leaving to study the magical art, one of them uses arcane magic to help people, same when so these dark gods and apparently they're losing love or beauty but this love and beauty are usually associated with love or beauty are associated with good things the third one carves a path of its own no good no good and no evil that would be loot that would be neutral and then they, in order, that'd be, if it's lining up in order, that, that second last line, if it's going up in order, that'd be right to good, black to evil, gray to neutral. There is one, uh, there is a very, very powerful artifact I know of that would be associated with both magic and alignment that would be reserved for powerful magicians, magis, or practitioners of the magic art. I'm going to say it's a robe of the arc magi. Seems myth. Your logic is infallible. A master tailor would make the best robes he could for his sons. Ternok, calm are... down! Uh, do you want Ternok to give the answer? Are you guys sure you want to No! No! <laughs> no! 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 That would backfire! <laughs> if he yes. even opens his mouth, I'm gonna stalk her kid. Ternok, Ternok, if you do not be quiet, I, we will make sure that you can play with your friends in the mountain lake here forever. You know, it's... So stay quiet. It's actually strange. If we think about these different riddles, it's almost like there's been a riddle aligned with each one of us. Huh. So Turnock's riddle probably would have already happened. Arthur's going to speak up before Turnock has a chance to screw this up now. Robert the Ark, my guy. That is correct. You people have passed the test of the mind. It now uh, falls down to if it is your, your power, your strength that will uh, Fail you, or is your wicked heart that will provide that will prove to be your doom? Are you have, ready? Do we have to this? take? Do we have Again? to take Tarnak to this trial of heart? You all entered together, and together shall be judged. It's like a totally doomed. If a will turn back and look towards. Uh, Ternok um, would say, Though this creature is wicked and vile, it seems to have helped you at least for now in your quest somehow. In any case, prepare to test yourselves against the might of a guardian as Idiocasti would take a step back and uh, at this point, I will ask to roll initiatives. Shit, oh shit, okay. Good old time for the universal shit. Well, you solved my riddle. Now I'm gonna kill you. 
<laughs> Sphinx would never do that. They would never get all upset. <laughs> but she's so pretty. Well, you found all my riddles. Guess you have to die. Do you think? <laughs> it's a shame. Do you do you think she likes to have her wings cleaned? I really, I really expected that to be an in question, in character Valen thing, and we're just all kind of looking at him, go, what? <laughs> oh, that was totally in character. <laughs> uh, Valen, I think you've been talking too much with the birds. Squawk, and, squawk. Uh, and uh, be, let me see, one, two, three, four, five. I'm missing someone. I'm I'm not on I didn't show up, but I'm I did roll. And I did have my token selected. Yep. I'll add you, uh, you can change your number and I will roll for Jorkul. Oh, I rolled for Jorkul. He rolled uh I'm gonna change it to twenty-three. And uh, I'm, here we I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Talius would go before me. What's your uh, What's your dexterity, Talius? Sixteen, I think. Yeah. So Talius would be eleven dot sixteen. What's Madeline? On, uh, so let, let me just guess. Since Jorko just stood up and went to somewhere and came back in his head, suddenly Spinks went. You have succeeded in all my questions. Now you must fight in me and win. <laughs> uh, before we fight, though, uh, just so we can get it all in one go, uh, let's take a break and come uh, right back for uh, the okay. fight. Uh, Jorkul, Iliocasti takes a step back and challenges you all as uh, they uh, instantly, as she does that, from her, uh, from her eyes, you see light cursing through and, um, and envelops slowly expanding from her, envelops the whole area around you. Uh, left and right, you see numbers, writing, letters, star sky, uh, star sky uh, constellations, everything around you glimmering and swirling as it is your turn. I don't know what's going on, but... And uh, he suddenly he starts just as he sees all these numbers and stuff. It's almost like a, a, it triggers something in him, and he's just almost this um, arcane magical. It's almost like he has a flashback of something arcane and hard happening to him when he was younger, and he starts fuming at the mouth as he enters his rage. And he both action goes into rage, then he just picks up his axe and just charges straight forward, hacking and slashing at the giant creature. He's just fuming at the mouth going, careful, the red elves, care, don't, you're wasting my time. And he just starts whacking. Okay. As it's my first, uh, I act before the scrooger and it is my first turn. I do get advantage on my attacks without having to use reckless. So that's nice. Does those two hit? I think missing DMs still. Sorry, I think I muted myself somehow. Oh. Um, I was liking the whole time, but yeah, both attacks. Uh, Ooh, damn. Jorkul coming in uh, quite fast as he uh, picks up his axe, jumps forward and strikes once, twice. The Phoenix puts both her golden wings in front as it strikes, ding, ding, embers scorching your face as um, your uh, weapon does some damage against her, but it is not that powerful enough to overpower her. As uh, I assume that's your turn, Jorkul, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, as all of you are rushing towards her quite fast, you feel stopping for a moment as uh, everybody rolls initiatives again. Ooh, it's wow. That's cool. Oh, shit. Way better this time for the Phoenix. 
Ще, ова ми казва. Rolling bars actually good. Um so Valen, you are up next. As you all take a uh, move forward, some of you um slow down, others um start uh, spinning up um as uh, this weird feeling takes a hold of all of you. Uh Valen, your turn. Go. Okay, that's weird. I'm confused. I'll step back and just go with the for zapples. For example, 26. 26 hits. I swear I pressed the button. Press six force and second for Zapple. Bzow! 19. Both hits. Yep, yep. Okay, Both 12. Hits. That one. That's better. And then I'm just going to circle over there behind this giant boulder. Uh, Jokal is still on his old initiative. Uh, uh, I think I already changed it to 19.14. Oh, okay. Um, no worries. I'll uh, put you right after Valen so we don't miss a turn. And uh, before you get to play Jokal, Iliocasti will uh, cast a spell with a legendary action instead. And uh, targeting uh, targeting herself, she will cast Greater Invisibility. As Valen strikes to eyes at her, and Iliocasti, after they were protecting herself with uh, her wings, shrews herself in uh, the presence of you. And uh, Jorko, your turn. She has not moved, so you can make attacks with disadvantage, but yeah. Mm. And this side, yeah, Jerkle doesn't see it. She starts pulling back and swinging giant, full-headed swings, ignoring all the fence, just swinging wide, up, down. You can see every now and then plowing his axe into the ground as he recklessly attacks the area, trying to catch or hit this creature that dare not fight like fighting on equal terms dare hide in the shadows uh, reckless attack uh, that takes it back to normal mm-hmm. and two attacks Did, didn't we meet jorkel when he set a trap and was hiding in the bushes <laughs> uh i believe so yes um but uh, Jerko, you're gonna miss twice as you wave your great axe up from you. Ah, where did you go? Shlah, hurrah! You yell in draconic a few words and curses as you swing with your axe, but it goes way wide and it kills Jerko. Hmm, cut a bonus action, don't I? Um, not really much I can do that as a bonus action. Uh, that's me. I, I scream. Uh-huh. I, oh, I, I, uh, I'll use it as a word. I, I turn to the rest of this, uh, as he screams, he's here. So it's like, somebody make him visible. You know, he just swings and continues to swing left and right like a crazy person. Okay, the Sphinx, you will hear a flap of the wings as it moves closer uh, to Valen, and the Sphinx will make uh, one of its attacks against the um, young sorcerer, the young uh, mage. For 12 points of passing damage, Valor, as Yokasti flies towards you, um, though invisible, and strikes to, uh, at you, throwing you back at the wall. Yet she does not appear, given that greater invisibility allows her to do so. And uh, right after, half behind you, uh, you will be suffering another attack. He's a quite clever opponent. He, she will target the uh, casters of the group, apparently. So, uh, Hearth, does that hit? Yeah. 
for 12 points of slashing damage as uh, you hear the, the wings flapping as Ilyokasi strikes uh, twice at both of the characters. You see Valen and Hart both drop to the ground with a giant wound towards their uh, chests. Madeline, your turn. Uh, so did I see Hearth here? Yes, uh, you even heard the, the wings of the creature. Uh, so you probably know that it is somewhere there. You can make attacks with disadvantage, but yeah. So didn't it go in a hearth second though? So wouldn't it be like right here is where I would have heard it, or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless it, it moved from there, but probably somewhere close to the uh, there. Well, I'm going to move here, and just in this area, just like angling it so it doesn't hit heart. I want to use my legacy of Kanya, or Kanya. Kanye, yeah. mm -hmm. and cast a oh, gee, what two okay. burning hands in that area. Yeah. Do, I do not have advantage, so that's a 12. What's your spell you see? Uh, so roll me the damage. I suffered all of that, and I must make a con save. I keep the invisibility, however. Uh, but, I, but you see the uh, the silhouette of the phoenix absorbing the flame damage, as you can hear. Ah! Um, roar right. behind it. I'll call out Italius, like, over here! And uh, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, right after that, it is your turn. She will use a legendary action to... Da, 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 da. Wait, she has more than three legendary actions? Yep, she did three uh, before uh, Valen, uh, right. after Valen, and then played it. So she gets back her legendary actions. Uh, and uh, uh, as uh, at the last second of your scorch, she is uh, somewhere else in that room. Okay, then. So. Daniels, your turn. Um, Still one legendary action left. <laughs> do I even have anything for this? Holy crap. Um, no, okay, get this out. Bonus action, uh, Shadow Blade. Uh, I'm going to move over to Valen about here, I guess. I don't want to uh, obstruct him. Um, and for action, I'm just going to... I'm going to ready an attack. <laughs> yeah, I'll ready just an attack, I guess. I don't know what else well, to I, do. Well, I don't think you should ready a hug. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> As Talia uh, Six is a few steps what the is this creature? As he creates his sudden blade and waits to strike at whatever might appear. As Ternok himself will turn in uh, visible. <laughs> And Hart, you're there. Okay. Then, 15, 20, 25. Still spell me enough movement to get myself into a corner because I may actually be a good thing at the moment. Then I'm going to summon my. Uh, no, I will be casting Mage Armor first. And okay. Will be my turn. Uh, as a hearth takes it uh, back to, uh, to the other corner, looks at Valen and Talius, uh, heeds their advice, goes towards there, performs an array of sigils and incantation, and zoosh, a molten barrier appears for a brief second. Uh, for the, not a lot. Your turn. I'll look back to Madeline for a moment and say, I have two crazy ideas. Uh, One. Hmm? Sorry yeah, to hear that. Out there. I'm gonna... Hmm? You got it. Madeline, Madeline you go to Madeline for a second. Can you repeat, Madeline? I mostly said, what, well, what crazy idea are we doing first? <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll see. I, I'll yell out to uh, just in general. Uh, Jorko, Talius, join me in. Oh, well, Jorko's already there. Tellys, Madeline, let's get to the middle. I have an idea. 
And oh, well. I'm going to get here, and I'm going to hold an action. So uh, basically, just asking, ask, just asking everyone to join around the around him at the moment. And uh, if everybody joins you, what they trigger? What you unleash? Pretty much what they. I will cast um, a wall of water and do a circle around us. Oh, mm, that's a good idea. As uh, Nautilus moves forward and starts casting uh, a spell as he awaits uh, over there. Next up is. Uh, the lair. As, uh, as you hear the words of the Sphinx echo, uh, you came before this uh, temple as uh, pilgrims, but you were uh, not even children when this temple was, uh, when the temple was guarded by another uh, guardian of this place. As the whole place fast sits, oh. and you see um, uh, all the area around you slowly uh, restructured itself. You see the ruins slowly reattach themselves to the ceiling. You see all the rumbles go away. Whatever dust remains on the floor slowly uh, whirls up and uh, withers as uh, the statue you see up ahead that had uh, some plantation growth going towards it is adamant uh, from its two eyes you see um, a, a pair of flames appear as uh, up front uh, a creature uh, appears a spectral guardian that looks towards you who are you to come to this place it is not for thieves no rogues, no evildoers to enter. As uh, that guy. And uh, Jorkul, your turn. Oh, yeah, I should. Go next. Sorry. This is interesting. <laughs> Crazy shit's going on. The music is falling on. He's like one moment standing there. This is. Uh... Hmm. There's no way for me to figure out where the creature is. Uh, you've heard, you've, uh, uh, the Sphinx, you mean, right? Correct. The Sphinx should be somewhere near Madeline or Half from the flapping of wings, at least, that you can. Well, what is this? In this, this thing just appeared and decides to taunt us. Yes. Right here. Well, since you can't see this and he's in the, the rage, he doesn't care, so he's gonna go straight here and. Uh, keep in mind, uh, Jordan, this creature is 30 feet onto the air. It's hovering on the statue level. Pretty much, it just came out of the helmet. So you can curl the javelin if you want, so you can keep your rage going, but uh, you do not have a, a path to make melee attacks towards you. Okay, um, better even. I am gonna do the rule of cool. Um, I am going to move here and seeing as he can't. He can't attack it. He's going to move to the statue. He's going to hit the statue with his axe and try and crack it and then break it and then grab back of it and try and break it forward. Um, okay. Um, I'd like um, I'd like a um, spell check. Ooh, okay. As Jorkul moves forward, starts screaming, yelling, and picks up, um, spikes his uh, great axe, sticks his great axe onto the uh, leg of the statue, and pulls it down to be destroyed with otherworldly uh, uh, strength. And the bonus action, Jorkul. Uh, bonus actions, not much except screaming and uh, and uh, and anger, and then uh, I could probably move, but uh, uh, yeah, that's me. Okay, uh, with uh, a legendary action, Iliocasti will give uh, Madeline uh, a slap. 
Uh, the sea is invisible and nearby. From behind uh, Madeline, as you're standing, looking towards Nautilus, you hear a giant shoot as you put your hands up front and feel the, uh, the claws of the Sphinx striking at you. And Valen, your turn. Um. Well. First, I'm just going to go ahead and move. Uh, be a good boy. And then I'm going to frizzapple spooky face up there. Uh, frizzapple. And... Bazow! 14 and a 21? Yes, both of them. Oh, neat. 12 and 11. And then I'm done. As uh, Valen, you move forward and uh, wave your hands into the air and sh like you just don't get it, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and strike at the creature. <laughs> creating two giant holes into the ethereal form as they slowly reattach themselves. A powerful hit, nonetheless. For the creature, you will pay for this. You can hear the creature saying, as next up, but you cannot see it, Iliocasti gets around as... Steve will move towards Talius and attempt first to grapple him. So, Talius, make me first an acrobatics or athletics, up to you. Okay, the creature grapples you. However, uh, you can make your opportunity attack now, but okay. you're grappled. That work? Oh, there we go. Uh, with disadvantage, you cannot see her, so... Oh, of course, yeah. That's what again. Damn it. That will not hit. Uh, the creature has taken a hold of you, and... Uh, second. It will then fly you a little bit um, further over here, but 20 feet above ground, uh, putting you against the wall, <laughs> striking, and then she will make a strike against you. Uh, that will not hit as tall as you've, uh, you are able a little bit to uh, now uh, see where the attacks will be coming from to expect. So, as the attack comes uh, towards your way, you put your saddle blade up in, uh, up in front to protect yourself. And the Locasti changes course and strikes uh, wide to avoid the attack. You are still 20 feet up in the air, as the Idolon over there will... Trespassers! It will yell as its eyes flare up with a yellow color. And I would like some wisdom sage from all of you. Fucking wisdom. God damn. I thought I, I did. <laughs> I oh, that's a disadvantage, but it's not really. It's still 11. I'm <laughs> still vibing. I'm missing someone. Uh, I believe I'm missing Madeline. Yep, okay, so I guess your only value is suffers that. Of course. <laughs> and uh, the fun thing is you have to use your action to dust away, but you're grappled. <laughs> In any case, as this creature will do that, it will then fly off to the near uh, the nearest statue and animate this one. As the statue raises up, it has already used an action, so it cannot use one this turn again, but it will move closer towards you, Jorko. This, this uh, large statue takes tush, 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 four steps towards you. As uh, Madeline, your turn. Uh, so I see Alien held up in the air over here, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, I know. I think it was big enough to hit if it were that high up, or would I know it's too small for that? Uh, with, uh, let me see, with Glaive you go. Uh, with the Glaive you can make attacks. Uh, you can make one attack, I guess, with a jump. If you okay. jump, you can make one attack instead of two. Yeah, and the 
Uh, let's do a jump. Then... Uh, given that Alice also has engaged, this attack would be normal for flanking. That hits. Yeah. <laughs> That's 21. That's good, that's good. Good amount of damage for the Sphinx as she needs to make a con save. Barely makes it. 10 is the DC. If you had rolled one more on the damage, that would be a fail. Uh, but yeah, as Madeline picks up her blade, jumps and strikes at uh, the Sphinx. You hear. Uh, uh, after you hear uh, hit Madeline, you hear the Phoenix uh, saying, "You, um, you focus on the wrong enemy, Kiar uh, Tifling. It is not I who will be your doom unless uh, you stop those." And anything else, Madeline, for your turn? No, that's oh. Okay, let me check if I can teleport you. Uh, no, I cannot teleport you. <laughs> it's so far. Uh, instead, I'm gonna make with a legendary action a claw attack. Yes. I will. Yeah, that hurts. Uh, does that hit? Okay, so that's. As you're still pinned on the wall, the claws of the Sphinx strike at your arm as you flint and try to keep hold of your concentration. Make me a constraint. Oh, shit, I forgot about these. Not a uh, 18. 18. Yeah, yeah. 18 is, is good. Uh, Stanley, your turn. Um, so, can I do anything because of the, uh, the the wisdom save, the fear thing? Oh, uh, let me check. It says I'm stunned if I can't move. Yep, you're stunned. Okay, well, at the end of your turn, you can, <laughs> yep, you can make a wisdom save at the end of your turn. Yay! Madeline, I believe that's a success. It's a 16 DC, right? Oh, it's a 15, yeah. But yeah, as Talius uh, looks towards him, oh, fuck! He tries to pull it together, and uh, he will. As next up is uh, Tenok. Let me just take you. Uh, you are you are still, though, uh, remember that you are stunned until you move again. So okay. that. That is something bad because it drops your concentration. Come the past. Does it? Shit. All yes. Right, where it goes. Uh, as next up, uh, Ternok will uh, slowly creep up as a centipede and uh, will uh, tell Madeline, "I'm gonna help your friend." And uh, half Ternok does for this turn. All right. Definitely moving away from the statue that thing can inhabit. <laughs> And I'm gonna light a bonfire right under the current statue. Okay, uh, let me make a deck save. Do, 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 do. I'm not good at that. Ah, so I start come to... on! <laughs> Apparently, I made it, that's what matters. <laughs> So, next up, anything else, Harf, for your turn? Ten more feet, Soren. I almost have one of the meat shields of a train me in it. Okay. Uh, not alas, do you want to do your uh, held action or not? Uh, nah, I, it, it's not gonna... It might not work exactly. So I'll drop it. I mean, it's not like it's a. How does that work for racial abilities? Does that. You still consume the use of it, yes. Alright, well, I'll just consume the use of it. And then. Um... Thank God. I thought I'd have a total freak out if you send that when you use the wall of water. <laughs> yeah, I have, have a PTSD flashback. Um. Okay, so. I had a plan, and that plan was 
pretty good until I realize the casting time. Uh, I'm gonna just cast a shatter here instead. Uh, to which place? Oh, try to hit the Sphinx. Yes, I know that it is holding Talius, and I'm not trying to hit Talius or Madeline, so. I mean, it probably hits. Uh, yeah, and I'm casting it at uh, well, third level, I guess. Try to get some damage yeah. out. I also keep concentration on the spell because I rolled the 23 on the of this one. Yeah, uh, I the damage. Did I say third level? I said yeah. second level. <laughs> no, <laughs> you said third <laughs> level. I know, but I know, but I realized that I don't have that many spell slots for third. <laughs> I had to save it for call lightning. Well then. Now you're doing it as a summon. Um, <laughs> now, now that this fight is taking place indoors, you can't call lightning indoors. I mean, no, the, the ceiling has to be a certain height. It doesn't have to be outdoors. In uh, any case, roll me the damage for this after. <laughs> uh, okay. It's a lot of damage. Yeah, That's a few. But you can fix it with flex tape. <laughs> as a powerful uh, uh, blast uh, strikes over there, as Nautilus falls toward this point. <laughs> but both Madeline and Talius, uh, well, not Talius, Talius is standing. Uh, Madeline puts uh, both of her hands to somewhat protect herself as Iliocasti uh, turns towards you, Nautilus, in response. You think uh, that is what will save your friend? Look how this temple has defended for eons against everything else not us. So. Uh no, that's it. Okay. Ilocasti will tele teleport instead for this turn uh, for after your turn. So Talius drops from uh, twenty feet and suffers two D6 points of damage. Uh, I can stunned, right? Uh, you cannot. Uh, you wouldn't make a save either ways, but you're not able to use your reaction to featherfall or something. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it is eleven. Wow, that's a high roll. Six and five. As you push, strike down, and again, as Jorku, you're about to attack uh, whatever creature you're trying to. Everything slows down and instantly again goes uh, uh, starts picking up the pace. As Ilocasti will keep her uh, initiative this time. Uh, but everybody else needs to make it up. Be sure to click your tokens, guys. That would help. 20 it is. <laughs> uh, does it um, does advantage on initiative roll or the vanity roll, or do I have to press it twice? I believe I have it uh, already set up. Yeah, it yeah. is already set up on yep. uh, the settings. I have it. If you go over on your, if you hover on your, it will you will see that you rolled the two and the nine. So I think that is correct. Uh, Ten look now, uh, picking up the pace as Madeline. You might be able to, given that you know his location, you will see him speeding through everything uh, through time to move around the statue and. Grant the aid to Jorku as Talius, you're no longer stunned as you are able to move. Um, I, wait, I get stunned at the end of the start? No, 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 you get stunned until you're able to move, it says. Oh, so, okay, you, okay, okay. You're able to play your turn. You just use 20 feet to jump up, back from pro. Okay, so I got 20 feet left. Doesn't do a whole bunch for me. Um, I guess I'll run up beside Balin. Take a quick breather and use uh, second wind. So we'll use that now. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Five extra HP, and I'm going to fire off a uh, what is it called? Ba -ba. A ray of frost at the this guy over here. The, the okay, guy. I can get that. Oh, okay. wow! Coming with a big gun, Stavius. <laughs> Hell yeah. Who, need, who needs swords? There we go. You know what the worst thing is? It has immunity to cold. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Stavius, you aim it. Oh, I got you this time. And if you 
a cold blast goes straight to the head of the statue. However, it does not uh, alter its course one bit as you're like, what is this? Uh, anything else, Thales? I don't know, that's my turn, that's all I got. <laughs> as, uh, next up is uh, Ilio Casti. Uh, will uh, wow, he doesn't have much to do aside from hit and run. So let's do hit and run. Uh, as uh, this time, uh, not alas, make me. Uh, I guess first thing that she will do is try to make an uh, attack with advantage against you. I assume that's a hit. For 10 points of classic damage towards you, not the last, as uh, the Phoenix runs towards you and strikes at the back of you uh, with your claws. Do you want to use your reaction for anything, or...? Did not the last be like back or anything? I am uh, not sure. Uh, not the last might be I don't, I, don't use it. I don't want to use it for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the next thing up, uh, make me an uh, athletics. Probably you're good at that, as the creature will try to pick you up. Nope. As you suffer a blow at your back, and then you feel like the creature tries to pick you up with it. Uh, however, you turn towards Valen. Valen, grab this. Uh, Valen grabs at, uh, gives you your stuff, and you pull right back onto the ground as Iliocasti will uh, move back to another space. Uh, behind her, her you can uh, you can uh, tell that she came right by you. As uh, Madeline, your turn. I'm gonna cast just under my mm -hmm. and I'm just going to in action to either hit the statue or if it comes in within range or Helio Casty if she attacks someone close to me. Okay, it's part choice, as that is my disconcentration when the attack is not, it does not need you to break it, as uh, you pick up your glaive and away it, as your blade is sick with a booming energy, sparks coming right out of it from time to time, as Jorkul, you're next. <laughs> uh, okay, we're still having issues with the lovely... Uh, um, lovely Sphinx that doesn't want to come closer to me. Uh, by the way, uh, I this... think how cool your raids might have uh, fall off, right? Depends. Uh, as long as I'm attacking something... You did not attack last turn. And, yes, so uh, I, need to, I need to activate my rage again, don't I? Yep. Yes. Cool, cool. Okay. Very well. I go into rage again. And this thing is an enemy, of course. Yes, uh, and you have advantage on the first attack from Turnock. <laughs> Good little Turnock. I'll uh, whoop in and he just starts smashing. He almost comes, the uh, Jerko comes, loses it for a second, looks around, not seeing the Sphinx, not, but sees everybody huddling closer together. And actually, he's not going to go into rage. He actually moves backwards. I think I'm going to take the opportunity to attack, but. He will go back into the circle with the rest of the mob. Okay. So you take an opportunity attack. And... Makes sense. Yeah. And yeah, that's it. Okay. Prepare. Sweet fuck. Woo! As Holy crap! As he looks at the creature and starts running back, the creature turns towards him and slams him with a fist as he. Drops back towards you, not as a model, and you've never felt so. Um, uh, uh, 
I'm gonna say uh, uh, the target, uh, but uh, I, I wanna I wanna say as he's rever- I wanna say as Jokul's reversing and he jumps it almost to the side, the creature suddenly swings to his, into his chest and he almost flies to the circle. He doesn't run to the circle, he's only cast it to the circle by the hip. Breaks down into the middle of this circle. But yeah, and he got a circle. Well, you haven't used an action, you still have an action. Uh, yeah, he goes down on his knee and then suddenly takes out a gourd uh, of, of um, out, uh, he's not a gourd, you know, gourd and suddenly starts drinking the alcohol that's inside it. I am going to use the amulet of the drunkard. A good choice, a wise one, I would say. As these creatures do not mess around much. Uh, roll me the healing from the amulet. I believe it's 44, isn't it? Like that? Yeah, 44 plus 4. So, yeah. Oh, that was. Ah, all uh, right, wrong. It picks up a tangard of fail and starts gulping. Nautilus looks towards him. Not the time to be drinking, Jorkul. Always is the time to be drinking. As he puts back his tangard and he feels regenerated from that. As next up. The uh, sacred statue will pick up a plate, a rock, from uh, below, and do, 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 do. let's do healthy boy. Not a last, let's do not a last. How about it? Whee! Does that hit? Uh, yeah, that hits. And then the uh, creature starts moving forward. Not a last, you suffer 24 points of blood and damage as the creature picks up a rock. And Slams the world, breaks in the middle of all of you as the creature takes one, two, three steps towards you. Madeline, you try to put your glaive, but the attack will miss. Oh, yeah, around me the inspiration. That hits. I suffered thunderous damage of resistance. However, I do need to make a con save. Huh. Uh, it still makes it. As, uh, oh, it's a strength. Uh, I believe it has pretty much the same modifier. Yeah, it's the same modifier, exactly. As uh, the creature moves forward and <coughs> as you strike uh, at it, the creature stands still. As uh, uh, Valen, you're up next. Well, poop. <laughs> I look around at everyone and say, This is not my strong suit! Uh, I'm actually going to... I'm just going to go for utility. Uh, and... Boom. Oh, well. I mean, still six for everyone is... Uh... Uh, 36 points of healing. It's a lot. <laughs> As a balance is a few water power, and instantly everybody starts regenerating. Uh, that's your bonus. You have an action. Uh, I'm just gonna attack the thing that's closest with some frizz apples. Pizzow! 17? And. Pizzow! Oh, 9. Does a 17 hit? <laughs> As both strikes strike at the blade of this uh, statue, uh, but uh, barely make uh, enough damage. Only some raw bubbles. Uh, All done. Uh, Parf, your turn. Okay. I really don't want to raise spell slots on the creep, but statue on the Sphinx is the hill in this you. Right, um... Yep. Right up here. And then Burning Hands as my race ability. Okay, that's how to move forward and sh- suits fire uh, towards the statue. That is a fail. For 11 points of damage. 
as uh, the uh, statue, the made of rock, slowly starts burning into molten magma as uh, steam and smoke comes uh, out of it. Anything else, Carl? Hmm. A few steps back to put meat shields between me. Keep in mind that this creature has a 10 feet reach. So. And half of now that. I mean, you can see it. You can see what the, the reach is of the creature. That's why I sent it to you. So you can choose if you want to stay here. Uh, however, but, if you. you, you but you that's half now it has a 10 foot reach. You can see it. You can see how, how far it can reach. That's what I mean. You know it doesn't harm. Okay, I'll stay right there and probably get targeted. Not unless you're done. Uh, I'm gonna, I guess, push through here and. Wait, can I reach it from here? No. Um, uh, no. Okay, then I'll move into its space. I'm going to try and hit it with my hammer. Oh, I need to use right. I need to use the hammer in here. Um, I will just try and do this. Doesn't hit, right? Does not hit. No. Okay. Um, from my observation, does it look like I can cast um, call lightning in here? Uh, how big of an area does go lightning need? I don't remember. It says 60 foot high. The 60 foot radius. 60 foot radius and the... Uh, it's a sounder 10 feet tall. Can I do it from here? No. No. I mean, if it's just... It's a, you you cannot accommodate the cloud because uh, it says uh, exactly that uh, you need a room that is able to accommodate the full cloud. So, ah, well then, not then here. if you are on the present, because there is an opening over there, then maybe, but uh, not when you are in the past. Right. Um, then it's probably going to have to be. Uh, I'll use my bonus action to summon. Old Faithful Spiritual Weapon <laughs> at second old level. Old faithful. Um, and it's going to take a swing at the statue and hit. Nice. Uh, where am I going to put it? I'll put it over here. And I will... Let's try action surge. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, I might as well try. I'm gonna action surge and thunder wave. At, okay. at second level. No, I can't do that, right? Because you said the spells are has to be a. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Never mind. I don't action surge. I, I, there's no point. Alright, yeah, my bad. Sorry for missing that. As uh, Nautilus moves forward, summons his weapon, tries to strike himself. However, the uh, the lance will appear and strike at the back of his uh, creature. Next up, uh, the lair will not be taking an action this time. As uh, Ternok will, after seeing what just happened, will not be moving closer to this statue. As uh, Talos, your turn. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Guess we're just going all ham on this guy, okay. Uh, 5, 10, okay, I'll go 15 feet here. Uh, I'd say two regular attacks of the Kopesh. So, normally, uh, Pesh, whack. Uh, the whack. Oof, bud. None of bad. them will hit. Perfect. <laughs> um, and then I will... these things? Yeah, I think we got to take care of the thing. Then we I'll just jump back. Out. We need to take out the Sphinx. <laughs> These ones are going just to respawn until we did. That's, that's all uh, I've got for my turn. 
Okay, as uh, Talus moves for makes a few strikes against the creature, but only barely wound or destroy part of its statue up front. As after the second strike, geez, they, this uh, creature is uh, tough. He will backflip back to avoid any opportunity as attack. Uh, next up, Iliocasti will rush and uh, move through both Valen and Talus and. Uh, Attempt to first solve uh, Valen to the ground. Well, to, 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 to. let's do not a solve. I cannot capitalize on that. And let's do a clone Valen. And I'm gonna be doing uh, again a stealth attempt on Talus to pick you up. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Valen, you suffered 15 points of slashing damage as the. A uh, creature uh, moves through you, clothes you at the back, and throws you on the knees. As uh, Talus, run with the athletic Yeah, okay, cool. I don't know. <laughs> ah, not this time. Uh, so th this time, you notice Valen getting wounded. Oh, not this time. And you jump high to avoid the attempt of the Sphinx, who, which who will rust uh, uh, on top of the statue. You can hear her ting, 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 clinging on the remains of the armor that Jordan has already dropped down. Madeline, your turn. Uh, I'm still on the range, but I couldn't put it in the air. Correct. I'm just kind of cutting it. Yep, yep, yep. is going to spin the glaive, and it's going to glow in a yellow light, and she's going to use Channel Divinity, Nature's Wrath, on the statue. Yeah. So, it has to. Uh, a strength uh -huh. or dexterity saving throw, or be restrained by Martin. So I guess that makes sense for this creature, so strength it is. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's rolling high as Madeline moves forward, and uh, as she calls down, spectral bands will indeed raise and uh, grab on the creature. They hold it still for a moment as Madeline uh, tries to cleanse her fist to complete the uh, ability. As the creature pushes forward, destroys these vines, and is about to uh, strike against you. And he gets one of them. Uh, nope. Uh, Jorkul, your turn. Yes, yes. Well, Jorkul did not like what he got hit. He goes, Bond's action goes into rage, and suddenly just almost jumps up. Uh, the alcohol spittle flying from his mouth as he comes and he takes two powerful swings at the creature's legs. Um, is this, you know, okay, so just normal attacks, right? Unless it's um, reckless? Uh, reckless is with advantage. Yeah, you can make with advantage. I mean, if you want, you can try flanking if you wish to move from there. Hmm, I could probably try flanking. Hmm. That would be flanking, right? Yes, and uh, the creature does not have blind sight. It is affected. It has the same senses as the Eidolon, so you are able to flank it. Very well. No reckless attack. Uh, just normal advantage. And two hits to its back. Let's see if I can hamstring this bastard. Both of those hit. Get him, Jordan. Doing a lot of damage, uh, still, though your great axe is not a magical weapon, it strikes at the creature and still delivers a powerful blow as the rubbish start coming crashing down from the back of uh, the creature. Anything else, your point? I'm just wondering, it says bonus action, I can interact with something in the world. Can I try and maybe, like, um, as I got angry, like, try and like um, kick his leg, try to get prone or something. Uh, do you have the ability to do that from... Uh, well, you used bonus action to go into range. Uh, to start oh, I did. That is correct. Yes, yeah. I did take... No, that's my... I am done. I am done. Okay. As the Dolan, uh, the second statue now, will turn towards you, Jorkul, and will try to slam you once. This is, I guess, you. And one, uh, and after it does, it will turn towards uh, uh, who is up front. Ah, uh, not the last. 
Does that hit Nautilus? Uh, yeah. So that's towards Jorko. Oh. That's 24 oh. Jorko. Ow! And what the? <laughs> that's a big high loss for Nautilus. I'm down. <laughs> Strikes at Jorkul and then turns towards Zorkul and boom, crosses him into the ground. Valen, your turn. Uh, uh, who's, who's, who's getting that damage? <laughs> uh, you will suffer 24, the 48. Jorkul is still up, yes. Rage is helpful. <laughs> Uh, Valen turns instantly and looks at you to Nautilus. Uh, first, I'm going to get Nautilus back up. Okay. Uh, is there any limit on the how many I can do it at a time? You can do a number of this equal to three. Uh, up yep. to three. I'll do your guys one Three. Okay. Okay. So I'll do that. Three d six. D three D six and three temporary for not as well. Yep. That's not bad. Fourteen uh, to Nautilus. Uh, seven, fourteen and three. So, and three and three. so yeah. So yes. that gets him back up, and uh, then I'm just going to for Zapple on that guy, the statue. For example, 14 does not hit, and then a second one, Bazow! 18. Ah, barely does not hit. Oh, oh it does you. not hit. Ah! Barely. Uh, uh, as uh, Valen uh, raises up Nautilus and turns to the creature and hurls both of his hands to strike twice at the creature. Tush, tush. However, in no part of that spot. And, uh, oh, that's it. Part. Your turn. Well. Disengage to get as far from that thing as possible. Okay. As a half sees the uh, what he did to Nautilus, oh, starts sitting back. Uh, as uh, Nautilus, your turn. You come back after a powerful punch against you as the creature slowly turns. The, as the Nautilus gets up, probably blood coming from his mouth, he'll just look around the room for a moment and say, do you want to know what I'll do to protect my friends? And then I'll run past it to Jorkol. And this is going to be a big, big stretch. But I feel like it's something that might be rule of cool enough. I'll raise my hammer up to the sky and place my hand on Jorkul's shoulder. And, made a, and I'll say... May my may the storm lord take my strength to feed yours, and I will cast life transference and try to what? use uh, channel divinity. <laughs> what? I will use channel divinity to max it on myself. Uh, isn't it okay? It's uh, it's supposed to be necrotic damage, but I know, I know. So I'm gonna let this one because it's obviously that this is something very, very powerful towards you, and it's not like something that we are gonna be intentionally doing for this one time. I will allow it. Yes. Holy moly! So what? <laughs> I take thirty-two damage, and Jorkle heals for sixty-four. Sixty-four. As Donald has moves forward and grabs himself. Lightning comes right out of all of him as his, uh, in his hand, a spark carries out, and as it touches you, Jorkul, lightning comes out of your eyes as Nautilus falls to the ground. Jorkul, you're gonna gain 64 hit points. Um, does that, uh, if it goes over the total, does that count as extra hit points or temporary hit points or not? Uh, it doesn't transfer to temporary, no, but it will get you to full at least. For, I mean, yeah. four hit points. <laughs> 
Jerk will now tell, this is not my final form! Uh, well, this isn't Hoth's final form. <laughs> if your casting will, with her uh, legendary action, she will dispel magic onto the spiritual weapon. Well, I mean, I went unconscious, so... Good, good uh, job. Sick. It, it still hurts. <laughs> I was worried to be like, she's gonna dispel magic the heal. No, 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 that's a perfect like <laughs> But in any case, as Nautilus falls to the ground, uh, let's do another initiative round, shall we? As the layer again will alter the time flow over there. Yeah. I'm gonna keep your cast the same initiative. <laughs> oh, damn it. I just went straight over it. <laughs> oh, from directly after oh, it to directly before. Now God I'm. Damn. Now I get to roll my death save real soon. Oh, oh, Unless sure. heals me. As everything around shifts, you see this letter, these constellations, these numbers all around you, they do not make sense. As some of you are running faster, some of you are even backtracking a little. As I believe Madeline is now first. Yeah, Madeline, go. Uh, point away on hands to the sea, ma'am. And she is going to viscerally shake him with it. They're like, you kill her! Ah! But that's 30 points, not worth. How many? 30. Well, that works. There we go. Okay, your mic was a bit muffled at the time you said it, but. Oh, weird. weird. Is it? That's weird. Hey. No, that's it's fine. Now. It's good now. Yep. Okay. Sometimes it just and then out. that's action. Um, good old technology. Yeah. Bonus action. Cry and get ready to get punched. Uh, that's the end of my turn. Not a loss. You are up. Uh, all right. Well. See, it's uh, magic value. <laughs> ah. From from on the ground, I. Uh, Stabathy. I... Well, no, I'm I won't. Hell's I won't... From hell's heart, I stab at thee. Oh, yeah. I, I won't stab at thee, keep, but I just will... Keep, just keep in mind, you have advantage on your attacks because you were, I'm in for a thin fight. Ah. Okay, well, then I'll action surge it, then, before the thunder wave. So, my first action will be the Warhammer with advantage, then the second one will be the thunder wave. Oh, yeah. Keep in mind, uh, just to make sure you can, since you're the only one that uh, can sort of do something like this, Talus as well. You can do Thunder Wave, Anxious Thunder Wave, because they're both a spell that requires an action. You cannot combine action and both sections. Just oh. uh, that out loud. It's so, not something you have to do right now. Action spell, action spell? Yes, if you action okay. search, you are able to do a spell. You cannot do an action spell in the bonus action spell. It's a little bit weird how this is clarified in the rules, but this okay. is the intention. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Nautilus, uh, do you do attack and uh, thunder wave, correct? Yeah. I do a con save. I fail that, so 10 feet away it is. As well as we strike once and then strike down the floor boom, to carry the creature back. As your blade is. Uh, your Warhammer does not dealing the lightning damage, by the way. Hmm? Oh. Oh, I Warhammer. used my D and D Beyond Warhammer. Hold on, let me. Uh... Just run me D eight for now, and that would be. Oh, enough. under D eight. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Get him. Uh, uh, next up. Uh, uh, let's do. I'm not doing. Talis again. Try me. I dare you. <laughs> no, no, I'm going for Madeline this time with a claw attack. As Ilio Castle from being behind will strike at uh, Madeline for 19 points of slashing wow. damage. And uh, she will uh, go ahead, Madeline. Oh, no, that's it. Uh, I was just. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, she will uh, right after try to grapple Nautilus away from you. Uh, Nautilus? Oh, yep, yeah, sorry. Uh, you can do it. it? 
Uh, athletics. athletics. Yep. 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 She would not make it, and she has five more turns with uh, greater in uh, visibility as she lands. <laughs> and you can hear her behind you that Ilio Castle has just landed. As uh, so next up is the sacred statue, who is currently uh, bloodied uh, enough as it will take a few steps, return over there, make an attack against Jorkul. So this is against you. Make me the attack, Mandolin. Well, <laughs> you have advantage. You do yeah, have advantage. Oh, OK. I am a pack master. There we go. See, 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 see. Not that great. <laughs> But the smite is nice. As <clears throat> uh, Madeline strikes back, however, the creature is still locked on the opponents that, that are actually maining it. So the first attack is at Jorkul. Uh, this is, I guess, you, Jorkul. Miss. Oh, yeah. I heard you know the last You used your reaction. <laughs> uh, but in any case, it will then try to grapple you, not the last So you are not going anywhere. Ooh, that's not. I bet, uh, I bet it will. <laughs> Let's see. Make me I athletics. bet it will. No, this time, as the creature tries to slam Jorkul, then it will g try to grab you, Nautilus, and um, that uh, will be it. Uh, yes, Hearth, your turn. The bitch is behind you. Okay. Going to try and light one more bonfire under that thing. I failed. Ooh, and that is a big damage. damage. As flames are up from below, and uh, the uh, the stones start melting into magma as the creature starts uh, crumbling down. It gets uh, hard. He is looking at the creature for a moment, then looking towards his bonfire and saying, Elemental fire is a lot stronger than I expected. Uh, that will be his turn. However, uh, as you make that uh, attack and uh, raise the fire, as a claw will strike you from behind, as uh, it will deal 10 points of slashing damage to you. And uh, Valen, your turn. I'm going to try to uh, zap the creature first. Uh, sorry, the, the statue. So, Shining Blast 1, Shining Blast 2. No, Valen, your yeah. sound effect is not working today. You forgot your sound effect as well. Yep, Pretty and terrible. then I'm going to run over to, to Hearth. As Valen sends shoo, shoo. To build towards the creature, they will not uh, make any further impact as Jorkul, you are next up. My friends, not leave! And he shall reckless attack this thing going for its legs, hoping to bring it down. Okay. Although I can technically try and pull it away. I don't think I'm going to move You can grapple it if you want. If you want, you can make an attempt to grapple instead of one of those attacks. You can grapple because it is large, so you're able to grapple it if you want. Well, what's the point, uh, what's the point of grappling it? Uh, if you want to get it away from the others, I don't know. Uh, no, no. It's, it's, odds are it's better probably to t try and destroy it than try to grapple it. Uh, it unfortunately, I didn't see me to, uh, picking it up and throwing it, but <laughs> well, maybe who knows? But he's going to take. Uh, he's going to move to this position here, or no? He's just going to keep next door. Uh, move to here or move to there. Uh, scream at it and make two reckless attacks. Do my anti uh -huh. <clears throat> recklessly attacking it, screaming, trying to pull its attention towards him. As his um, as his uh, companions are being attacked by this thing. Okay. Oh, seriously. Mm. 
none of those attacks hit as you wave twice with your uh, great ah! Ah! Uh, as uh, they barely graze upon the uh, statue and uh, Talios, your turn. Um, I guess I was, yeah, okay, run up. Do I, you know, I only have, I got a, I have spell slots for a reason. I'll Shadow Blade again, bonus action. Get that going. Uh, pop, and then two regular attacks with Shadow Blade. Uh, advantage. Uh, oh, advantage. Yeah, yeah. from Jordan, um, this, the first one will be hit. The first one will be for the first, anyway, and then, okay, I'll just do it again for crit. Never mind. Cool. Yeah, I'll hit. Uh, pop. Pop. Not too bad. Indeed, not too bad as Talios with his psychic blade strikes twice through uh, the creature, and you slowly see the creature starts crumbling, and uh, the apparition inside it tries to escape, as it is very, very wounded. And uh, anything else, Talios? Um, the it hasn't left yet. The apparition, no. No, not yet. Okay. Still alive. Okay. All right, I'll jump back to here, and then that'll be my turn. Uh, as uh, next up is Madeline, your turn. Uh, let's rule of cool this because it's gonna come out afterwards. So. We're gonna do that spin again, but this time we're gonna finally use that token because we're gonna cast right on the statue. Wow. Whoa. A lot of damage as Malin just channels <laughs> radiant energy on top of it. This, uh, by the way, this token is a little bit wrong. I'll this is the correct size for Mudbin, but yep. still. And he makes a con save. At the start of its turn. Right. Uh, and the guns about Mudbin. Uh, no, that's it. Madeline picks up her glaive, shrills it in the air, strikes it to the ground, and uh, a beam appears uh, straight out of the moonlight, striking at the creature as a Nautilus. You are up next. Okay, uh, I would... Hmm... I'd like to just... I guess I'll take a smash at it with my Warhammer. Using the right Warhammer okay. this time. Um, with advantage. With advantage. That will not hit. Alright, uh, then I will... Um, the bonus action. The bonus action is shield of faith myself. So I have 20. Okay. As Nodalus uh, uh, uses his uh, hammer to protect and uh, seals himself. Was next up, before uh, Hotel Iliocasti will make. Uh, Another claw attack towards uh, Hearth. So, claw. For 15 points of damage behind you, Hearth, as you stand over there. And uh, now at uh, her turn, she plays. Uh, she will try to grapple you, Valen. So make me a strength check. Or not a strength check, acrobatic or athletics, Valen. No, I suck at all this. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> So, Ilio Casti will uh, pick you up and. Uh, Hurl you pretty much inside uh, the moonbeam. What? Yep. Oh, As a God. Wait a minute. Hold on. That's. 30 feet? She has uh, 60 feet of flight. So, she can do half movement. Uh, with you, as she will, for the next action, it will be a shove to throw you inside. 
or a drop. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, the, uh, pretty much that's what happens. Uh, he picks you up to divide you from harm, uh, pulls you up, and hurls you inside there. Uh, so uh, at the start of your turn, you'll be taking the damage from the Moonbeam. But right up next, before I make the save for the statue, the statue will no longer be animated as the Dolan will try to get out of it. However, the Dolan must make the save instead. Yes. That's a concept. Yep. Question. Can I... Go ahead. Can I make a opportunity attack on it? With my spell? If it moves. Which it will, because it's going straight for the other uh, statue. Oh. So I'm uh, trying to position myself to be ready. Yeah. It's so, gonna... Jor Nautilus and Madeline and Valen, if he has his uh, spear up, it uh, you can make opportunities attack. Yes. Yeah. Um, hitting it with a guiding <laughs> bolt, second level. Uh, can you make? I believe you can use cantrips, not spells, right? No, it's it's I, 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 with Warcaster, Warcaster I can use it spells. Spells. Okay, it's I have no problem. I'm just uh, double checking. Yes. <laughs> this is right. Well, it, he already took half of seventeen. She, she already took half of seventeen. Then that. Nineteen plus twenty-three. No, well, hold on. It, after the guiding bolt, is she lit up for the glaive? Uh, uh, yes, from the guiding bolt. So glaive still hits, as I said, with thirteen still hits. Uh, let me do the math. Like missed something. I mean, if anyone threw, uh, it's not. Uh, it's the, the same thing. Yep, this is enough. I was just double checking. Uh, the, yeah. This is enough. They, they don't. I'm not ready. <laughs> Do not blow themselves. And the creature will try to rush on the other side. Everybody, get it now! Strike at the same time. As uh, uh, I believe, only Valen, you do not have to use your opportunity attack. Uh, I guess you you are the first one to use it uh, because you did a little bit extra damage. However, uh, yeah, you, uh, that will not be enough. Otherwise, so yeah, as the Dolan instantly disperses and the statue crumbles down below it as uh, uh your turn okay i am very relieved now that uh Eidolon is dead grouping just going up here to get grouped up with that run and then dodge as uh, Harf returns after suffering uh, two strikes at his back, he slowly creeps up to the, uh, crawls up to the next level of you, uh, trying to avoid any attacks that will come towards him. However, Valen, as the line starts to charge you, Madeline will drop the spell, and uh, you will look towards her, you nod to one another, and uh, Valen, your turn. Uh, one second, before Valen, just before that, I can make a legendary reaction to claw attack, not on us. So, how about that, not on us? Um, L. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Valen. Okay, so. First, I'm going to try to stand up Nautilus again with a quick healing light. Uh, so hit him with 3d6, 10, and then the 3, temp. Got that, Nautilus? Yep. Got it. Okay, so that's the 10 plus the 3. And then... Uh, Earlier, that spirit was over 30 feet above us, which means that the ceiling is more than 30 feet tall, right? Yes. Okay. Then... So here's a question, DM. 
I guess it's not. There's no flying speed. Um, Nautilus was just attacked, right? Yes. So the creature must be near him, and uh, given that you you can see where the wound came from somewhere over there. Right. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to cast in in the space directly above me, uh, north of me, I should say. Not above me, but north of me. Uh, that little spell. Guardian Ooh. of Faith. Coming in with the big guns. Check, where is it? Oh, didn't I import it? Yes. Come on. Here goes Guardian of Faith. Alright, here somewhere. Here is good. <laughs> Where do you want it? Yeah, right right there. That's good. Okay. Uh, the, uh, as Valen raises his hand up and zoom. Now I, I did flavor uh, I did flavor that up a little bit, just as a uh, do do do, just based on my patron. Uh, I did not check, sorry. That's okay. The icon can stay, but the concept. Okay, okay, okay. I'll, I did not know that. I can fix that in another time. But for now, uh, the guardian appears over there and protects. What the hell is that? Uh, protects everything around each reach. Uh, and the guns, Valen. Uh, th that's it. So I guess the constitution save Nautilus just made was because he was clawed. Yeah. Uh, yep. And he lost concentration, making his shield of faith. Okay, yep. that's it for me. I healed somebody, I called something, I'm done. Jorkul, your turn. Do I need to find this woman? She's... What the hell? What is that? Balan, this is the telling me. I know, I was saying, Ben, weren't you telling us something? And I thought I had secrets. Um, I mean, you saw me cast a spell. Everybody could see me cast a spell, so you know it's me. I, I, <laughs> I, I know. It's just, it's just, you know, I don't trust. I mean, okay, to to be honest, I did go on a murderous rampage, so you're probably more trustworthy than me, but still, anyway. Um, can I do... Do I know the just general relative term of the Sphinx, or can I make uh, some kind of nature role to determine? As I said, the creature is pretty much above not Above? So, so well, yeah, a little bit above, like above, uh, say, north. Depending on how you feel about this, um, Jerkel goes and he kind of cuts his ha uh, his hands across the braids, and he starts throwing, throwing his blood in the air around there. Okay, uh, I mean that pretty much gives you that uh, that the creature is on those three squares. Much. Uh, okay. Well, uh, then he'll basically. Uh, can I make a attack with disadvantage with the javelin, just throwing in the general direction? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Very well. He'll pull back and recklessly throw it to see if, uh, if he, by chance, aiming for the one square, hoping by all chances that his reckless attack might actually all corner some um, hit. Okay, make me get that. Uh, That's a hit. The attack hits. Yep. 
I mean, that's reckless roll for quit, crit, isn't it? Or no, it's uh, straight, right, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, let me roll a concept for Elio Cast. See, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Visibility is off. Let's for how go. long? That is now a question. <laughs> but uh, indeed, as Jorkul, you send some of your blood. Ah, there you are. You pick up the javelin and hand it over the creature. Stoosh! Strike! Add it. So here's here's a question that I have. Go ahead. Uh, just for that spell, Guardian of Faith, it says on any creature that is hostile to me that moves to a space within ten feet for the first time on a turn. It doesn't uh, say. It didn't move this time. Oh well, it says I'm trying it here. Has to move. I'm trying yeah, here. I mean, take the spell uh, recently. However, I'm pretty sure it's gonna get some value. Uh, uh, of this spell. <laughs> Maybe not right now, but. We'll see, we'll see. It still has a duration. Uh, but, uh, yep, uh, Jorkul, anything else? And depending on how you feel about this, because it was a single attack, so it's 30 feet in the air, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, no, it's not going to work. Unfortunately, it would have been awesome. If I didn't throw the statue off onto its side, I would have tried to wall run up the statue and just jump on it, trying to grapple it to the ground. But uh, in this okay. case, Jericho... you can do that. You do have the, uh, both the movement to try that and the uh, the jump to make it the strength to make the jump. So, uh, uh, Jericho, Jericho suddenly pulls back and starts running. And what was left of the statue, basically aiming as a jumping board, as you see him jump, and then suddenly seeing his prey finally in front of him, he almost goes to a feral state and he jumps at it, almost trying to grapple it, trying to tear it with his bare hands. And Blix, at sea. Oh, Come on. Man. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, Jorkul jumps, uh, however, Jorkul, you will drop onto the ground. You will not drop into the uh, the guardian, but you will be suffering 2d6. Can I? Imagining half from the fall. Come again? I can't give him my inspiration, can I? Uh, you can. You can, sure. Try it again, Jorkul. Okay, so this is one normal roll or the... Uh, normal roll, yes. Isn't it? No, no, no. Uh, inspiration gives you a re-roll, but not a re-roll of the total dice. It gives you a re-roll. Just re-roll a d20, and that is it. Okay. Yep. As you, come, okay. as you try to grab the creature, the creature will flip around in a 360, and with its wings, it's going to send you crashing down for three points of bludgeoning damage. And uh, you are prone. Talus, your turn. Okay, now that we've got vision on it, uh, 30 feet to here. I think that's 30 feet there. Um, or here. It's still up in the air. Can I reach it from here or do I have to jump? Uh, you have to jump so you can only make one attack with it. Like, uh, you have to go similar to Jorko, like move here, jump, and then you turn it somewhere. Okay. So wait, the or jump you can, is... you can hurl your blade if you want to. You can send your shadow blade. Well, what, what, uh, what is it to jump? Is that an action? No, no, no. It takes from a, you need a certain strength to make the jump. You have 19 strength from the gauntlet, so you can make a, a jump that is good enough for that. However, you'll be taking some uh, full damage because you need to climb first a little bit on the uh, statue over there. It is a cool idea, however, it makes way more sense for you to hurt the shadow blade, reappear it, hurt it again. Um, hmm. Okay, so it's, so the jump is just my movement, and I can get one attack in, or...? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, one attack with a jump. Dang, okay. That's a problem. Uh, yeah, okay, I, for now I guess I'll just start hurling the... Uh... Okay. Frost, but it's not it's not great. Um Oh, actually. Or, mm, I can throw it. Bonus action back. Throw it again. Yeah, okay, I'll go I'll go with that. I'll throw uh, uh Shadow Blade twice and then Okay, throw it once. Oh not good. 
does not hit. Bonus action to reappear in the and channel again. And, and also remember, I'm still enraged, so you get your five. Do you know if you are not within range, fine. you have to be yeah. as well in range, or you're not. However, 16 does not hit. As you hear <laughs> twice, you silent blade towards the creature, but none of those attacks will uh, hit. As uh, uh, Talus takes a few steps backwards, and uh, the Ilio casting will yell, You've defeated the guardian of the past, but what lies in the future of this time if uh, a careless individual slaughters uh, me in uh, a fit of rage as he looks towards your pool? And let's go to the future! Hooray, everyone! Oh god, it's cool, but oh god. <laughs> Here we are in the future. Here we As, are in uh, the future. Everything around oh. you starts shifting, changing. Oh, you see uh, you see around you corpses of former uh, heroes, uh, adventurers, mm -hmm. up, crushed by the rumbles uh, the, um, uh, of everything around here, uh, stones fall uh, as you look around, yet they pass through you as time itself flows through you. And you see rumble striking you down, yet you do not move a bit. You see all the vegetation destroy the opening upright and expand all around the area. You see the statue as Jorkul had already made reform itself and then collapse once again as uh, from uh, uh, this pit over there, you see slowly uh, uh, something appearing. As you see, a giant flower with uh, 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 tentacles that uh, attaches itself to the corner of the room and uh, dead bodies popping through it uh, as it appears. And let me make a certain, first of all, a nasty row, and second one. This has nine corpses God. inside. Yeah. As uh, this creature uh, appears over there, Iliocasti turns, looks towards that a body of a powerful necromancer lies ahead in this world. Those vile people that uh, wish for its secrets can be careless to unleash such a monstrosity as Madeline, your turn. Um, hmm. Okay. Jump Helio is 30 feet up in the air, so I could move without taking an attack opportunity, yes? Hey, yes! Okay. Um... Not really gonna try the whole javelin thing, so I'm going to move a bit closer to Tharth to give him some kind of meat shielding and take the dodge action. Okay, as uh, Iliocasti Il from over there will first make, uh, I believe I make a deck save for your Guardian of Faith, uh, and Valen. Uh, scroll, 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 scroll. Deck save. Uh, okay, this is the reach of your Guardian, by the way. Yep. Like, this is where it's going to pitch. So, deck save for... Uh, uh, for me, I fail that. 20 Radiant. Nice. And uh, that makes Iliocasti bloodied as uh, Iliocasti will, uh, after getting striped by that, will. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, oh, powerful fiend, powerful creatures uh, of old. Now, uh, protect the temple from its true, from the vile that lies beneath you. So we'll once again cast oh, Greater Spirit. <laughs> Seas are lying, I know, but that's how Phoenix are. They're very, very clever. And uh, uh, and you will hear the wings flapping as uh, the Phoenix moves away from here. Uh, towards the entrance. As uh, Nautilus, your turn. Carlos will yell out. Everyone get back. If we get stay close to this guardian, we'll be fine. Uh, 
and uh, I will cast. Uh, I'll cast Staggered Flame on the big flowery thing. Okay. Apparently, uh... it's also very flexible. Who would know? As uh, uh, not as you raise uh, uh, radiant energy from below the creature, however, it sticks its tentacles away and slowly creeps up to the uh, the wall to avoid it. the uh, attack. Anything else? Not last. Uh, nope. I just. Okay, I'm. I'm gonna assume that Terndok is not an enemy of you, Valen, else. He's yes, correct. No, it, it it says creatures that are hostile, so as long as he doesn't try to attack me. And by the way, I'm just curious, because the phoenix flew away, doesn't that trigger the guardian's ability? Uh, that is what triggered it. Pretty much. Like, uh, moving to its range and getting out of it, pretty much. Uh, because you can only suffer it once. A standoff goes to the very uh, edge. Ah, what is this? Afraid that uh, that would be the turn of stern as a uh, heart. Your turn. Okay. Look over towards that plant thing. Look back to wherever I think the Sphinx is and just. Yes. You want a plant to fight a fire mage? And I will fireball. Yes. Get it hard. Okay. Apparently it's super dexterous with a plus two on making other saves. Oh. That's still taking 16 points of fire damage. And I'm guessing all the vegetation around it catches fire as well. I'm okay with giving some of that. Uh, since it ignites flame of blood and this is pretty much de destroyed. Uh, I'm going to make a, a little fire for you. A little. <laughs> I mean, it is one hex. A little. <laughs> As Hold and holy fire, as hard strikes and flames appear from the, the flames will not last for long. They will not remain much because they will burn. They will burn, and then uh, that will be all for them. However, they will still be some hindrance. As uh, uh, and the guns have any movement or thing there. Then twenty. I'll end my turn there. Valen, your turn. Okay. I'm going to blink my eyes a little bit. And maybe realizing that a sphinx that turns invisible had cast a spell. <laughs> Not having an innate uh, ability. It is... Uh... It is a cool idea, you can have an inspiration, however, the tech magic states that you need to be able to see uh, who is, uh, to see the target. Invisibility is not revealed when you cast uh, Well, uh, I tried. <laughs> it's, a cool, it's a cool idea. It's a I tried. Uh, believes I can use something and uses both of his new albums and his eyes to try and detect the Sphinx, but you're not able to find them. Anything else, Valor? Uh, let's see. Nautilus is up front. Well, hold on a second. Hold on. Um, this stupid thing. What's my range? Rear. That thing's 35 feet away from me. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna... I got my bonus action still. So I will do a healing light again. I don't have many of these left. Nautilus. You're getting 2d6. 5 plus 3 and you're all done. That's all my healing lights. And I'm done. 
finish. Jorko, keep in mind, uh, I'll say that to Valen if you want to move. You guys, you might want to move a little bit back so they end their targets, because if they come over here, they do not get damage from the Guardian. They yeah, I was just taking that. Yeah. Um, Valen, if you want to move, move. Uh, five feet, not unless I'm okay if you want to move, but Jorko, your turn. Buddy's in there. I know you're thinking it. I know what you're thinking, Jorko. It's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 no, no, it's already but, dead. But Blood. Leave it alone. But Leave it alone. <laughs> oh, but, 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 but. We get the loot later. Okay, that's that's future for me. <laughs> he stands up. He's going to throw a javelin at this creature and then step five feet back. Just so I can keep my rage going. Okay, so, so you're moving. moving. No, no, no. You're moving I'm just standing up. I have to stand up from prone, so that takes half my movement oh, yeah. anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. so now I'm not prone anymore. Then I'm going to throw a javelin at this thing here, and then I'm going to move five oh, feet back to here. Curl that javelin. It's normal attack. It's a rage attack. Strikes. As the javelin uh, sounds deep inside the uh, the corpse flower, it does not have any resistance or anything. And the gods Jorko, as you you take a movement back, the creature starts moving away from the fire. I'm gonna roll two d6 extra from fire damage. That is four points of damage. As this creature will move. Over here, and uh, first it's gonna slowly uh, grapple on to that knight and uh, consume him. And uh, as a bonus action, it will set him out as a zombie. Of course. As uh, the, the remains of the human go inside and then turn right outside as uh, uh, an undead creature. Uh, oh, um, I forgot. I was going to pull our master of the plant since it came within 10 feet. Okay, make me the attack. That hits. Three points of slashing. Okay. Uh, as then the corpse flower will continue its uh, movement. Uh, down uh, below, not taking opportunity attacks as it still stands within your uh, range. Its action was to consume this corpse. As uh, Talios, you're next. Oh Jesus, that completely just fucked my plans. Um, what's 40? And uh, keep in mind that either you need to move over here to retake your shadow blade, or you need to use your bonus action. Bonus action, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so. Can I hit him from there, from the 35, or do I have to be on the 40? Uh, come again? From here, can I hit from here, or do I have to be uh, like uh, on Over him? there, yeah, yeah. Where yeah, you are okay. pointing, that is correct. Seems to be ignoring Valen's thing. Um, yeah, I'll do it. Okay, I'll run to here, 35 feet. Bonus action, call the Shadow Blade back, and then uh, Booming Blade. On him. Uh, da, 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 where is it? Wait. God damn. Okay. It is not uh, connecting. That does not hit. As uh, so you summon the blade up again to your hands, you rush forward and try to strike. However, the creature notices you at the uh, last moment, takes a step back. And both you and Madeline, as you move forward, you smell this weird odor, this thing that almost causes you to resuscitate. As you close your eyes, flint, and miss with the attack. As you take a step back, what? Oh, God, awful smell. That's my turn. <laughs> I'm really not doing much this combat. Oh, uh, dear. I'm, I'm not going to reroll initiatives just yet. I'm going to wait and see first. So, Madeleine, you go. Uh, first, before you do anything, roll me a con save. Uh, 
you succeed. So uh, for three turns, you can ignore uh, this effect. Keep that in mind. Um, I guess she's going to focus on the zombie before it becomes a problem. So we're just going to attack that three times. Got it. Hits. 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 Okay, let's see if that is enough. Uh, the DC is 10. It is enough, as the zombie is instantly... As uh, Madeline, you make one, two uh, attacks to slash it, uh, and as the, the creature drops down, cut down in half, you stamp your glaive uh, uh, with the other end on top of its cover. Becomes cool. Nice! And against Mandolin? Nope. Nope. Okay. As uh, uh, next up is Nautilus. I know this is going to sound just... really bad, but um, I'd like to try and use um, Sacred Flame to burn away the corpse it's about to eat. Uh... You know what? You are committing an action. I'm okay with that to uh, try come up the effect. As you see the creature approaching and his tentacles uh, slowly aiming towards it, you turn uh, turn to it and blast it with radiant energy. I remove that. Shing. Nice, nice. Um, I think I have anything bonus that I can do. Um. Hmm. No, I think that's it. For now. Uh, Hearth, your turn. Okay. I see what you're doing there. I will be burning that body with a bonfire now. Uh, which one? Sorry? Uh, that one right there. Okay, as uh, uh, Hearth uh, looks from, huh, interesting, flames hurl and the uh, zombie with us. Uh, anything else, Hearth? No. Uh, Valen, your turn. Okay. Um, the thing next to me, is it doing anything? Is it threatening? Is it just hanging out? This one? Oh, this is a corpse. Yeah, okay. Just want to make sure it's not moving. <laughs> I'm going to take a step back. <laughs> take another step back. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'll just take the one step back. And then I'm going to use an action. Um, I'm going to use the rod of the pack keeper. Nice. Okay, as the Valen grabs his, uh, his rod and challenges the power within it, it, it uh, flares up with uh, light uh, for the moment, as his eyes do so as well, for the moment. Uh, anything else, Valen? Um, I think that's all I got at the moment. Jerko. Just confirming, this thing, this thing isn't flying, or what's that sign actually mean? By my this is fire? that it has nine corpses inside. Nine corpses inside of it. Can I... Uh, how big is this thing? Uh, it is large, so... so okay. The idea, the idea I have is coming here and then trying to move it into the fire. Uh, you can try and grab it, yeah, of course. All right, then let's do this. Jurgle suddenly jumps out, runs forward, uh, screaming, screaming in rage, telling them, Get that to the get to get to that shiny thing, and he grapples with the thing. Uh, That's him. Athletics, right? And you should be able to, yeah. And so you did twenty-five. Well. You did twenty-five, so that's thirty-five. The creature moves here, and you do not have much movement to move 
else, uh, but you do have an action, so you can, if you want, solve it over there, if you succeed on another plan. Or you can make sure. an unarmed strike towards it. Uh, up to you what you want. No, I'll, I'll try and tr throw it into the fire. Okay, so make me an athletics again. Yeah, I have oh. a So, uh, getting closer to the fight as Joe uh, tilts and turns the creature towards the fire as uh, much as he can. Uh, next up is the corpse flower itself. And with its bonus action, it is going to shed another, go uh, another zombie out. Uh, straight up, as it appears from uh, 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 five feet within it, so I can spawn it right here. Uh, uh, after that, that's a bonus action, and uh, for its action, it cannot move, it cannot harvest the deck, so it will try to multi attack. Uh, with a reach of 10 feet, two will go to Jorkul and one to Madeline, so it is Jorkul, Jorkul, Madeline. At that order. So only one hit Jorkul, correct? Yep. Okay, in a moment. I've done eight. And uh, make me a con save as uh, the creature hurts its tentacle and uh, uh, one of them goes for your hand, you bite at it, but the other one straight goes for your neck and start, uh, uh, and you can feel a rush as uh, you suffer no poison damage if you make the save. So this is only five points of blood damage. As another tentacle is hurt for Madeline, Madeline you use your reaction, to, not your reaction, your glaive to cut it down, yet these tentacles stick with her as the creature tries to move back. And uh, before that, uh, zombies turn, uh, the zombie will try to attack you, Madeline. Did you take dodge again? I believe no, you no. didn't. So that's an attack from the zombie. I believe I clicked on it. It yeah, does not hit us. The zombie will try to uh, strike you, uh, grab you with its hands. Usually just elbow it to the chest and force it back. As Talios, make me a con save. Oh, poop. Uh, hold on. Concept. Yeah. Yep, you are immune for the next two turns. Keep that in mind. Uh, okay. Okay, I got it, got it, got it. Um, how much damage would I take from going into the fire? Uh, uh, 2d6. 2d6. That's a bit. Um, you know what? Why go into the fire? That is a stupid suicidal thing. Nah, I only I'm take sure it for going in once, that. right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run through the right up here and behind. Uh, as I run in, I'm gonna do a little spin and cast absorb elements. Okay, so you will suffer. You suffer four points of damage, and your uh, blade is rift in uh, flames now. Shadow flame blade. And then, yeah, on, on the spin, attack him on the way with a booming blade? Yeah, booming blade. Let's go with booming blade. Uh, you can do also green flame blade. It will hit the zombie. Like, this I don't have right. green flame blade. <laughs> okay. That's, that's me. Kind of... Sorry. That's me. Uh, uh, <laughs> Joy's been out of my... Okay. Whoosh. Oh, that's... That, that uh, hits, but also... Yeah, it has the uh, blind sense, so it doesn't get flanked. However, you do have advantage from Jorkul being raging, so you're not with, just for a crit, maybe? Okay, no, okay. No, no okay. <laughs> um, uh, so, that's so, yeah, the attack will hit. Auto, uh, and the D4 as well. It is. Oh. Damn, okay. Uh, I'll just roll the D4. It's 1d4, isn't yeah, it? D6. D6. Oh, D6, right, sorry. Yes. Actually, two fire damage. Oh, and then. Uh, let's do an action surge. Uh, two regular attacks with the Shadow Blade. Okay. Whoosh. Whoosh. Wait, okay. didn't you do just. Uh, what bonus action did you use for the first turn? Uh, first turn? Uh, I mean. It's like. You can't use the bonus action again. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I, use, I, can use, I didn't use bonus action this turn, did I? Yeah, you can still use it. Uh, both of those attacks will hit. I'm just yeah, checking I'll, to see. Yeah, I'll do it afterwards, I guess. Uh, so, swoosh. Swoosh. And then bonus wow. action, Shadow Blade again. 
And Richard is blooded. As, uh, wow, more? Yeah, my bonus is actually. I didn't lose it. So I, I get my, uh, my war magic for country yep. attacks. So, and another one. So that's 15, 15, 30. This way. 41, okay. 53 damage. Oh. A lot of damage as Stalius comes in, buffs into the flames. Uh, I forgot, but Ron may can save, but now for your Saddle Blade, because you did take 5 damage. Oh no, I swear to God. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Sorry. okay, it's not advantage, but oh, thank God. It's okay. Oh. Yeah. Imagine. To go. However, this time the lair will use uh, uh, the Sphinx will alter the time flow, and I want you to read all your initiatives. Good enough for me. Uh, the Augusta will not read all. Fifteen is fine at first. Okay, so Madeline, you go. Uh, same thing. Gonna just take care of the Zombo uh, advantage because you're cool. And then again, if the zombie's still up. Still up. Okay, that's a DC 17. Might not make that. It makes it, so it's with one hit point. All right, we're gonna poke it again. <laughs> go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. <laughs> Shit. Again, the zombie is not uh, going anywhere. As a Madeline, you move forward and uh, try once, twice. Uh, you look at the creature as it's barely standing. Ah, oh, come on! You bonk it on the head with the other side of your uh, grave, but the zombie is still up after you have crushed completely its skull, split into two. It still hovers its hands and is about to attack you. And it gets mounted. Uh, that's it. George could make the con save. Oh, okay. Poor Jericho, for some reason. Uh, sense of death. So, you are incapacitated. Uh, incapacitated. Can I step. use my inspiration to reroll that? Go. Ooh, that's better. Way better, because you have Madeline as well. So, this will uh, be a save. Uh, so, make me your turn. Uh, I'm gonna tr uh, try and do two things, depending on if you feel like the action economy is, um, justifies it. One is I want to throw this thing into the fire here, and second, uh, then let go and grab this thing and throw it over my shoulder into the fire as well. Okay, so make me a. Uh, you can do it two um, ways. You can uh, you can move over here and take the creature with you. It has already failed. The grapple, but you'll take an opportunity attack from the zombie. Would that be okay for you? That's 20 feet of movement as well for you. Oh, can, can't I, if I'm if I'm there, can't I just move the creature from there into the fire? Uh, that would require an action to solve here and another action to solve here. So that would be two actions. So action economy-wise, you can pull it over there. This will only take movement, not actions. You'll still keep your actions. Well, then... So be it, let's pull it over there and let uh, the creep zombie get its uh, opportunity of attack. I have to give this dead GM something. <laughs> <laughs> it does not hit you, however, as you grab and pull that uh, corpse flower into the, back into the flames. So uh, you can leave it from grabbing it now if you want to, so you can attack it. You have two actions now. Okay, so I'll... Uh... But if I release it, it's going to move out of, uh, out, of uh, out of the fire. So I'll just make an unarmed attack if that's fine. Uh, okay. Bonk it with your head. A headbutt. Or... Mm, uh, I 
okay, release it in one attack. Release it in one attack. As he drags it there, he suddenly pulls You can also use attack. your breath right now if you want to. Cool. Sorry? You can use your breath also. So when you have both of your hands grab the creature. Halitosis. Oh, that, that does that does sound actually quite fitting, doesn't it? Very well, let's do breath weapon. Okay. Uh, I believe I make a deck save, right? That is correct. A deck save equal to my con and proficiency. I failed. Roll me the 3d8. That's sad. That's a sad. Arkun roll, grabs man. the creature, moves it forward, and breathes, exhales lightning coming out of him from his short uh, the stone, shocking at the creature. As uh, uh, Talius, your turn. Okay. Um, let's start my thing up. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I'm going to run up. What far can I get? 25. I'll get to here. Uh, uh, booming blade, shadow blade. Uh, da da da. Steam? With advantage, keep in mind. Oh, yeah, because he just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, that's a 15 and a 13, so. Hits? Oh, it does? Okay, perfect. Um, it doesn't have a matches. <laughs> I don't know anymore. Uh, so that's. Yeah, sh uh, booming blade, so. There's that. Damn. Good uh, crazy. action strike again. <laughs> Whoosh. Hello. It's... And then 16, and then jump 5, 10 back here to Madeline. And uh, that oh. is my turn. Okay. Uh, Iliocasti will uh, move closer towards uh, the whole lot of you, and uh, uh, see will. Um, a cool trick again and again, but what can you do without those? And uh, dispel magic on your shadow blade. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> I hate this thing. <laughs> God uh, damn. Next up, the corpse flower. The very first thing it will do is to burn. Burn and then consume one of the zombies. To, let's see, I mean, if I ex roll extremely high, ah, almost dead, but actually it will survive and uh, regain 17 hit points as one of the zombies come uh, uh, of the corpses it has inside comes right out and destroyed completely. And uh, then with its attacks, the corpse flower will try to. Uh, all of them are going to jerk because uh, yep. he's the target that's grappling it. So, Jorkul, are you? Did you attack reckless? Do you have advantage or no? No, I don't. No, no, I did just the breath attack. Remember, I just yeah, yeah. Correct. So, Almost. three attacks with the tentacles all towards you. However, as you breathe lightning, you pretty much uh, make all those attacks um, uh, fizzle. And uh, Nautilus, as the flame is no more. Uh, as I said, it will only last for a turn. I moved it one turn, and now all this yet, is... Uh, one more turn, and I've been able to use control frames to spread it onto the monster. <laughs> Sadly, not unless... I run up, and I'm gonna try and smack it with the hammer. Um... That hits. As uh, Nautilus moves forward and strikes at the creature, lightning uh, goes through it. As you can hear a screeching sound uh, and uh, smell this awful odor come out of it. Anything else? Uh, I will bonus action. Uh, a bonus action second wind. And that's your turn? Oh. Yep. Uh, by the way, Nautilus, Eight. where did you start your turn? I started. Uh, before hearth, just underneath hearth. Here? Yeah. You have two levels of exhaustion, we do not have 20 feet of movement. 
I thought I thought the uh, it only reduces it by like ten. I didn't know it was half. It's half. No, no, no. It's, okay. it, 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 it's half. So uh, uh, you can retract, play the again your turn. I'm okay with that. Okay. Well, then instead of hitting it with a hammer, I'll throw a guiding bolt at it. How about it? And this is where it's not going to hit, and I'm going to be real sad. <laughs> <laughs> It will hit and it will destroy it. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have much as as uh, you uh, as a novelist, you hear the like, guiding bolt straight out of your hammer and psh, as it blasts, it uh, radiant energy stir the remains of this atro uh, atrocity in front of you. Valen, your turn. Uh. Crap. I'm just... Since I don't know where the Sphinx is... Um, I'm going to take a step forward. And... I'll just go ahead and zap that zombie. Okay, I can get back. One and two. Let's see. Uh, roll me the damage. The first one. Ah, oh, whatever it is, I do not make. It. So down goes another zombie as Valen has two, two blasts at the creature, striking it down. And I guess that's it for now. Okay. Karth, your turn. Okay. I'll just go ahead with my original plan to burn it by creating a bonfire right beneath that thing. Okay. And as you raise your hand and start charring it, you will hear uh, if you're casting as to uh, uh, so say. Now you've mastered the brave guardians of the past and the dangers that loom ahead. But it is not only this world that can be affected by the knowledge of this place. Uh, let me... Uh, This is where we go. Holy crap! Uh, Where the fuck are we? we? And... Yeah! <laughs> Everyone just stunned. That is this week. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, yeah, good good session. Jesus. <laughs> what an ending.